Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about material and compound nouns. Let's get started. Remember that a noun is a word that is used to refer to people, places, things, events, substances, and qualities. Now have a look at the example over here. The dinner was amazing today. In this sentence, the dinner is a noun, and it is used to refer to a thing. Now, material nouns denote material or substance from which things are made, as in the examples below. A plastic bottle, a diamond ring, etc. Note that the word plastic is a material noun and it is used to describe what the bottle is made of. The same thing with the word diamond. It is used to describe what the ring is made of. Now, material nouns are uncountable, thus they do not have a plural form. Generally, articles are not used with material nouns as they are uncountable. Have a look at the examples below. I really want to buy these cottons pants. Now this sentence would be incorrect because the material noun cotton should not be used in its plural form. The correct sentence would be I really want to buy these cotton pants. Remember the material nouns fall into several categories. A. Related to nature. For example, air, water, salt, coal, silver, gold, etc. B. Related to animals. Meat, milk, egg, wool, etc. C. Related to plants. Cotton, coffee, tea, wood, etc. D. Artificial or man-made materials, such as alcohol, cheese, brick, steel, etc. Now, a compound noun contains two or more words which are joined together and form a single noun. Remember, the compound nouns can be words written together, words that are hyphenated, or separate words. The first word usually describes or modifies the second word, denoting its type or purpose. Consequently, the second word identifies the item itself. Have a look at the example below. I need to buy a new toothbrush. Toothbrush is a compound noun written together, and the first word, tooth, describes or modifies the purpose or type of the second word, which is brush. And so, toothbrush is a brush used for cleaning one's teeth. Now, there is no exact rule as to when we should write compound nouns together hyphenated or as separate words. Remember that if you are not sure how to write a compound noun, consult a dictionary. Have a look at the examples below. Could you go with me to the bus stop? The compound noun bus stop in this sentence is written as separate words. And in this sentence, my in-laws are incredible people. Hyphenated. I love your new haircut. You look fantastic. Haircut is a compound word written together. Note that the stress usually falls on the first syllable in compound nouns. As a result, the word stress helps to differentiate between a compound noun and an adjective plus noun. Have a look at the examples below. 
A greenhouse is a glass building used for growing plants that need warmth, light, and protection. In this sentence, the word greenhouse is a compound noun. And in this sentence, a greenhouse is a building that someone lives in. This building is painted green. In this sentence, the words green house is an adjective plus noun. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember the material nouns note a material or substance from which things are made of. Now these nouns do not have a plural form and articles are not used with them. Provide the correct form of the following sentence. Have you seen my rubbers, gloves? Have you seen my rubber gloves? Also remember, the material nouns can denote things related to nature, animals, and plants. Now read the following sentence and underline these nouns. My ideal breakfast would consist of bacon and eggs and a glass of milk sitting somewhere at the beach, breathing fresh air and enjoying life. Bacon, eggs, milk, air. Remember, the material nouns can also denote artificial or man-made materials. Now read the following sentences and underline these nouns. Do you think that Alice will like this perfume? I don't know if she'll like its sweet scent. Perfume. Also remember that a compound noun contains two or more words which are joined together and form a single noun. Now the first word usually describes or modifies the second word, denoting its type or purpose. Consequently, the second word identifies the item itself. Now read the descriptions in the brackets and provide the appropriate compound noun. A machine used for washing laundry. Washing machine. A person who watches what is happening without taking part. A bystander. Now remember that there is no exact rule as to when we should write compound nouns together, hyphenated, or as separate words. Thus, you always need to consult a dictionary. Now have a look at the sentences below and decide whether the words in brackets should be written together, hyphenated, or as separate words. Helen loves going to the swimming pool in summer. Swimming pool separated. Check in and baggage drop off for most flights open two hours before the scheduled departure time. Check in hyphenated drop off hyphenated. I don't let my kids eat in their bedrooms. Bedrooms written together. Here's a short story using material and compound nouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Do you want me to cook something special for dinner? How about just wine and cheese? That sounds simple, yet fancy. Let's eat outside then. Yeah, 
I'll take some clothes so we could sit on the ground. Just don't take that cotton clothes. I had a hard time washing it last time. Roger. And I'll probably order some takeaway too, in case we get very hungry. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the material nouns. A. These leather boots are too expensive for me. B. You need to fry it in vegetable oil for 10 minutes. C. Throw some wood into the fire. It's getting cold. D. I don't like cast iron pans. They are very heavy. E. She bought stunning silk stockings. And now, read the following sentences and form compound nouns using the given definition. A. A room with a bath or a shower, a sink, and sometimes a toilet is called a... B. If a person has red hair, we call him or her a... C. The time in the morning when the sun appears is called... D. Is the main character of Disney's first animated feature-length film and The Seven Dwarfs. E. The father of your husband or wife is called a... And now, let's check your answers. Leather Vegetable oil, wood, cast iron, silk. A room with a bath or a shower, a sink, and sometimes a toilet is called a bathroom. If a person has red hair, we call him or her a redhead. The time in the morning when the sun appears is called sunrise. Snow White is the main character of Disney's first animated feature-length film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The father of your husband or wife is called a father-in-law. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about countable versus uncountable nouns. Let's get started. Now remember that a noun is a word used to identify any class of people, places, or things, which are known as common nouns. Or a noun is a word used to name a particular one of these. And that is known as proper noun. Have a look at the example over here. You can buy coffee at Starbucks. The word coffee in the sentence is used to identify a particular thing, which is coffee. And the word Starbucks in the sentence is used to name a particular place. Now let's have a look at the difference between countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Now countable nouns are things that can be counted even if the number might be extremely high. For example, all the people in the world. 
Other examples are apple, song, house, etc. Uncountable nouns, on the other hand, are things that we cannot count with numbers. Note that they may be the name for abstract ideas or quantities or for physical objects that are too small to count or shapeless. For example, liquids, gases, etc. Other examples of uncountable nouns are tea, money, love, etc. Note that countable nouns can be singular or plural, as in the example below. I have an apple, and you have three apples. However, uncountable nouns do not have plural forms, as in the example below. We're going to have rice for lunch. Note that rice is an uncountable noun, and so we cannot use a plural form. Also, with singular countable nouns, we can use a or an. Have a look at the example below. There is a girl outside. She is wearing a beautiful dress. However, we cannot use a or an with uncountable nouns. But you can often use the phrase a bag of, a cup of, etc. Have a look at the example below. There is a bowl of rice and a bottle of juice on the table. Now, if you want to ask about the quantity of a countable noun, you ask how many, combined with the plural countable noun. Have a look at the example below. How many dogs are there? There are five dogs. And if you want to ask about the quantity of an uncountable noun, you ask how much, combined with the uncountable noun. Have a look at the example below. How much coffee do we have left? We don't have much coffee left. Also, you can use many, a few, few, with plural countable nouns, as in the examples below. Sorry, but I didn't take many pictures. I've got a few relatives living here. And with uncountable nouns, you can use much, a little, little, as in the examples below. We didn't do much shopping there. We have a little sugar left. Note that you can use some, any, a lot of, both with plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Have a look at the examples below. We like singing some crazy songs at karaoke. Did you buy any oranges? She showed a lot of signs of affection. And with uncountable nouns, we listened to some music there. I didn't buy any orange juice. There is a lot of love in the air. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember, the countable nouns refer to items that can be counted, while uncountable nouns refer to things that come in a state of quantity that is impossible to count. Read the following words and mark countable nouns as C and uncountable nouns as U. Water Uncountable Money. Uncountable. Cat. Countable. Anger. Uncountable. Computer. Countable. 
Beach. Countable. Sand. Uncountable. Street. Countable. Note that you can use a or an with singular countable nouns. And with uncountable nouns, you can use a phrase, a bag of, a cup of, etc. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of the countable or uncountable noun. I want to buy plant so that my room looks nicer. I want to buy a plant so that my room looks nicer. Pete can eat bag chips without drinking anything. Pete can eat a bag of chips without drinking anything. Now, if you want to ask about the quantity of a countable noun, you ask how many, combined with the plural, countable noun. On the other hand, if you want to ask about the quantity of an uncountable noun, you ask how much, combined with the uncountable noun. Now, read the following answers and provide the appropriate question. I got six muffins. How many muffins did you get? There isn't much sugar in them. How much sugar is in them? Also remember that you can use many a few, few with plural countable nouns. And you can use much, a little, little with uncountable nouns. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks with either many, a few, few, or much, a little, little. I've got a money left and a more errands to run. I've got a little money left and few more errands to run. Also note that you can use some, any, or a lot of, both with plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blanks with either some, any, or a lot of. There was strange tension between them and a co-workers found it worrisome. There was some strange tension between them and a lot of co-workers found it worrisome. Here is a short story using countable and uncountable nouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. The kitchen was a total mess. What do you mean? There was mold everywhere. There was a pile of dishes in the sink. There were leftovers on the plates. There was some milk spilled all over the countertops. That sounds awful. Yeah, I wanted to clean it up, but there wasn't even any soap in sight. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether the underlined nouns are countable or uncountable. A. I washed my hair yesterday. B. You need to take one cup of flour. C. Sorry, 
but I need to breathe some fresh air. B. I'd like to give you some advice. E. Sam brought a bottle of red wine. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with a or an. Note that sometimes no article is needed. A. It wasn't her fault. It was accident. B. When Mike was in Turkey, he stayed in big hotel. C. Sally is bundle of nerves as she has job interview tomorrow. D. There is lot of snow outside. Be careful. E. IQ test measures intelligence. Now let's check your answers. Hair, uncountable. Cup, countable. Air, uncountable. Advice, uncountable. Bottle, countable. It wasn't her fault. It was an accident. When Mike was in Turkey, he stayed in a big hotel. Sally is a bundle of nerves as she has a job interview tomorrow. There is a lot of snow outside. Be careful. An IQ test measures intelligence. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about collective nouns. Let's get started. Now a collective noun is used to refer to an entire group of people, animals, or things. Therefore, it includes more than one member. Have a look at the example over here. My family is very big. The word family in this sentence is a collective noun, and it is referring to an entire group of people. A collective noun can refer to several things. A. People, such as family, class, committee, staff, etc. B. Animals. A pack of dogs, a swarm of flies, a herd of horses, a litter of puppies, etc. C. Things. Pack. Set. Bunch. Stack. Etc. Now remember that when the members within one group behave in the same manner, they are part of a collective noun. Thus, this noun becomes singular and requires a singular verb, as in the example below. Every day the football team follows its coach out to the field for practice. Note that the members in this football team behave in the same manner. And when the members are acting as individuals, the collective noun is plural and requires a plural verb. Now, in many cases, it may sound more natural to make the subject plural informed by adding words like members, mates, etc. Have a look at the example below. After the practice, the team mates shower, change into their casual clothes, 
and head to their homes. Note that the members of this group are acting as individuals. They are showering, changing into their casual clothes, and heading to their homes individually. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that collective nouns can refer to people, animals, or things. Now read the following sentences and underline them. The jury is about to decide whether the man is guilty. The jury. A pack of wolves hunts at night. A pack of wolves. I can't believe he smokes a pack of cigarettes a day. A pack of cigarettes a day. Remember that when the members within one group behave in the same manner, they are part of a collective noun. Thus, this noun becomes singular and requires a singular verb. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the verb in the bracket. The orchestra often to play at the gala. The orchestra often plays at the gala. Also remember that when the members are acting as individuals, the collective noun is plural and requires a plural verb. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the verb in the bracket. Write now the cast to practice their lines before shooting. Right now the cast are practicing their lines before shooting. Here is a short story using collective nouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I had the most amazing time backpacking with my classmates. Did you like Canada and its nature? I sure did. A range of mountains was magical and the animals have seen. A flutter of tiny butterflies, a herd of deer, and a family of beavers. Yeah, it's not something you can see here. True, I wanted to create some long-lasting memories of this experience, so I tried taking a sequence of photos, not disturbing the wildlife and just observing it from the safe distance. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following list of words and form collective nouns. A. A band off. B. A flock off. C. A team off. D. A pair off. E. An army off. F. A bouquet off. G. A hive off. H. A pride off. I. A choir off. J. A galaxy off. 1. Sheep. 2. Ants. 3. Stars. 4. Singers. 5. Flowers, six players, seven lions, eight musicians, nine bees, ten shoes. And now Let's check your answers. A band of musicians, a flock of sheep, a team of players, a pair of shoes, an army of ants, a bouquet of flowers, a hive of bees, 
a pride of lions, a choir of singers, a galaxy of stars. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about concrete nouns. Let's get started. Nouns can be concrete or abstract. Now, concrete nouns are tangible and you can experience them with your five senses. On the other hand, abstract nouns refer to intangible things like actions, feelings, ideals, concepts, and qualities. Have a look at the example over here. Food is great, but love is even greater. Note that the noun food in the sentence is a concrete noun because food is tangible and you can experience it with your five senses. Love, on the other hand, is an abstract noun because it refers to something that is intangible, feeling. Now a concrete noun is a noun that can be identified through one of the five senses touch, sight, hearing, smell, or taste. Have a look at the following examples. Who turned off the TV? Note that the noun TV in the sentence is a concrete noun. And in this sentence, what is that noise? Note that even though noise can't be touched, you can hear it. So it's a concrete noun. Now, concrete nouns fall into several categories. Let's have a look at those categories. A. People. For example, mother, friend, teacher, stranger, etc. B. Places. For example, school, McDonald's, Las Vegas, India, etc. C. Things you can touch and see. For example, plane, cup, lamp, book, etc. D. Things you can hear. For example, music, noise, someone's voice, song, etc. E. Things you can smell and taste. For example, herbs, cookies, bread, wine, etc. Now remember that concrete nouns can denote people, places, or things you can't touch and see. Now read the following sentences and underline them. The burglar broke into their house. Burglar I want to travel to Dubai and see Birdie Khalifa with my own eyes. Dubai? Birdie Khalifa. Could you pass me the water bottle standing over there? The water bottle. Also remember that concrete nouns can denote things you can hear and things you can smell and taste. Now read the following sentences and underline those concrete nouns. Where is that sound coming from? Sound. There is nothing better than freshly baked cookies. Cookies. Here is a short story using Concrete nouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. We went to the Maldives on our honeymoon. Wow, I know that there are a lot of luxury hotels and resorts. Yeah. It can't be quite pricey, but I was saving up money for this occasion. 
I booked a honeymoon suite for us with Carol. Did she like it? Absolutely. There were rose petals on the king-size bed, there were candles everywhere, and you could see the ocean right through the windows. It was a magical place. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the concrete nouns. A. It was my dream to become a teacher. B. What's that noise? Where's it coming from? C. Ugh, it tastes like feet. I can't eat it. D. Her mom likes to bake apple pies on Sundays. E. A lot of teens don't go to prom. F. I've been dreaming about going to Spain. G. Sometimes you can't get a good job without higher education. H. It was a real act of bravery. I. Reading books with your child is a great bonding opportunity. J. Should I get you anything? I'm going to the shop. And now, let's check your answers. Teacher, noise, feet, mom, pies, teens, Spain, job, education, bravery, books, child, shop. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about abstract nouns. Let's get started. Remember, the nouns can be concrete or abstract. Now, concrete nouns are tangible and you can experience them with your five senses. Whereas, abstract nouns refer to intangible things, such as actions, feelings, ideals, concepts, and qualities. Have a look at the example over here. Food is great, but love is even greater. Note that the noun food in the sentence is a concrete noun, as it refers to a tangible thing. And love is an abstract noun, because it refers to something that is intangible. Feeling. Now, abstract nouns fall into several categories. Let's have a look at those. A. Emotions and feelings, such as anger, sadness, love, grief, etc. B. Human qualities and characteristics, such as beauty, maturity, humor, patience, etc. C. Ideas and concepts, such as knowledge, freedom, luxury, comfort, etc. D. Events, for example, marriage, birthday, career, adventure, etc. Now, many abstract nouns are formed from adjectives, verbs, or nouns. 
and sometimes you can add a suffix to the concrete noun or alter the word root to form abstract nouns as in the example below child is a concrete noun whereas childhood is an abstract noun and remember the nouns with the following suffix are often abstract shen as in devotion ism as in pessimism iti hospitality ment movement nas as in restlessness age as in marriage ends as in brilliance ends as in indifference ship for example relationship ability such as availability ac bureaucracy now let's review and practice a bit remember that abstract nouns can denote emotions and feelings or human qualities and characteristics now have a read of the following sentences and underline the abstract nouns michael's indifference was breeding hate towards him indifference hate her dedication is something that can't be ignored dedication also remember that abstract nouns can denote ideas and concepts or events now have a read of the following sentences and underline the abstract nouns freedom of speech is a basic human right freedom rights will you attend kate and william's wedding wedding and remember the many abstract nouns are formed from adjectives verbs or nouns and sometimes you can add a suffix to the concrete noun or alter the word root to form abstract nouns now read the following sentences and fill in the blank with the appropriate abstract noun they totally failed i was a total failure here is a short story using abstract nouns listen as i read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation after i'm done make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation it was such a lovely wedding yeah you're right there was so much love and appreciation in the air and i couldn't stop looking at those two they were destined to be together i don't believe in destiny or anything like that but i'm really happy that their friendship grew into a loving relationship based on mutual respect and trust and now it's time for you to practice on your own read the following sentences and fill in the gaps using the words in brackets to form abstract nouns a conceive the word kind b kate's parents can stop talking about the of going to college important c my brothers will get him nowhere lazy d it was my to accompany you 
trees. E. I could see all shades of, in her action, angry. F. Jake had all sorts of, when he saw his crush talking to another guy, think. G. I am sure that our will last forever. Friend. H. I couldn't contain my excited. I. Dogs are known for their loyal. J. I value, above all, honest. And now, let's check your answers. Kindness can save the world. Kate's parents can stop talking about the importance of going to college. My brother's laziness will get him nowhere. It was my pleasure to accompany you. I could see all shades of anger in her actions. Jake had all sorts of thoughts when he saw his crush talking to another guy. I am sure that our friendship will last forever. I couldn't contain my excitement. Dogs are known for their loyalty. I value honesty above all. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about possessive nouns. Let's get started. Now the possessive form is used with nouns referring to people, groups of people, countries, and animals. It shows a relationship of belonging between one thing and another. Have a look at the example over here. Lisa's aunt is a doctor. Note that the word Lisa's in this sentence is in a possessive form, and it shows the relationship she has with her aunt. Now, to form the possessive, simply add an apostrophe plus s to the noun. It's in the examples below. My brother's computer was stolen a week ago. Children's toys were on the ground. And if the noun already ends in S, just add an apostrophe. For example, students' homework will be assessed later. And for names ending in S, you can either add an apostrophe plus S or just an apostrophe. Note that the first option is more common. For example, they want to sell James's car. Now study some of the fixed expressions where the possessive form is used. For example, a day's work, a month's pay, and a year's time. For God's sake. Also note that the possessive is also used to refer to shops, restaurants, churches, universities, etc. using the name or job title of the owner. Have a look at the examples below. I want to go to Lungi's for dinner. Pete has an appointment at the dentist's at 10 a.m. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that to form the possessive, add an apostrophe plus s to the noun. Read the following sentence and provide the possessive form 
of the noun in the bracket. The baby clothes should be washed regularly. The baby's clothes should be washed regularly. And if the noun already ends in S, just add an apostrophe. Now have a read of the sentence below and fill in the blank with the possessive form of the noun in the bracket. Your parents' signatures are not needed in this case. Your parents' signatures are not needed in this case. And for names ending in S, you can either add an apostrophe plus S or just an apostrophe. Note that the first option is more common. I like Adam's style of writing. I like Adam's style of writing and make sure to study some of the fixed expressions where the possessive form is used now read the following sentence and fill in the blank with the possessive form of the word in the bracket jim needs more than a month pay to cover his expenses jim needs more than a month's pay to cover his expenses. Also note that the possessive is also used to refer to shops, restaurants, churches, universities, etc. using the name or job title of the owner. Now have a read of the following sentence and provide the possessive form of the noun in the bracket. Some people do not agree with Facebook new privacy policy. Some people do not agree with Facebook's new privacy policy. Here is a short story using possessive nouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. It's so difficult living together with him. James's clothes are always lying everywhere. And then he would come to our place together with his brother's friends and play board game till 10 p.m. Maybe he doesn't see this as an issue. Have you talked about it with him? Why can't he get it without me pointing these issues out? My parents' relationship isn't like that. Stop complaining for God's sake. I think that James's patience will run out soon. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and find mistakes. A. My mother's in law tips are really helpful. B. I want to go to Olivia Place. C. The girl's room was very messy. D. I don't like your t-shirt's logo. It looks weird. E. What's the book's title? F. We're hanging around at Macy's. Could you pick us up? G. I guess that they won't finish this project even in a year time. H. Lawyers' fees aren't fixed. I. Have you already read today's newspaper? 
J. Kelly, boyfriend, is running late. Where is she? And now, let's check your answers. My mother-in-law's tips are really helpful. I want to go to Olivia's place. The girl's room was very messy. I don't like your t-shirt's logo. It looks weird. What's the book's title? We're hanging around at Macy's. Could you pick us up? I guess that they won't finish this project even in a year's time. Lawyers' fees aren't fixed. Have you already read today's newspaper? Kelly's boyfriend is running late. Where is she? Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about possessive pronouns. Let's get started. Remember that a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun in a sentence, making the subject a person or a thing. Note that possessive pronouns are pronouns that demonstrate ownership. Have a look at the example over here. This car is mine. Note that the word mine in this sentence is a possessive pronoun and it tells us who the car belongs to. Now possessive pronouns are used instead of possessive adjectives and nouns. Have a look at the table below. Subject, I. Object, me. Possessive adjective, my. Possessive pronoun, mine. You, you, your, yours. He, him, his, his. She, her, her, hers. It, it. It's, it's, we, us, our, ours, they, them, their, theirs. Note that there is no apostrophe in possessive pronouns ending in S. Have a look at the example below. I don't remember buying these jeans. I think they are yours. And remember that possessive pronouns stand on their own. They are not used with another noun. Have a look at the example over here. This is her cat. Note that her is a possessive adjective and it can be used with a noun. It's in her cat. And in the sentence, this cat is hers. Note that the possessive pronoun in the sentence, hers, is standing on its own. Now we can use possessive pronouns after of. Have a look at the sentences over here. Jake is one of my friends. Note that we can also say, Jake is a friend of mine. Note that the possessive pronoun in the second sentence comes after of. And remember that possessive pronouns simplify constructions that show possession of a noun. Have a look at the examples over here. This is your room and that is our room. The simplified version of the sentence would be this is your room and that is ours. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that possessive pronouns are pronouns that demonstrate ownership. Now provide the possessive form of the following pronouns. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. I, 
I, mine, you, yours, he, his, she, hers, it, its, we, ours, they, theirs. Also note that there is no apostrophe in possessive pronouns ending in s. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank with the appropriate possessive pronoun. This is not give it back. This is not yours. Give it back. Also remember. The possessive pronouns stand on their own; they are not used with another noun. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank with the appropriate possessive pronoun. I don't think it's their car. I don't think this car is theirs. Note. That we can use possessive pronouns after off. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using off and the appropriate possessive pronoun. I'll have lunch with Michael. He's my colleague. I'll have lunch with. A colleague of mine. Remember. The possessive pronouns simplify construction that shows possession of a noun. Now read the following sentence and provide the simplified form of the sentence using a possessive pronoun. My phone is dead. Give me your phone. My phone is dead. Give me yours. Here is a short story using possessive pronouns. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. This dress is not yours. Give it back, sis. What are you talking about? I bought it a week ago. No, it's mine. I've had it for ages. You're always taking my stuff. This dress isn't yours. No, it's mine and mine alone. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct word. A. The kids are your, yours, and my, mine. B. The final decision is your, yours to make. C. Anne doesn't trust her, hers parents. D. What's my mine is your yours, my mine friend. E. Don't go through my mine stuff. It's it's disrespectful. And now, read the following sentences and simplify them by using possessive pronouns. A. Shall we go to your place or my place? B. Her birthday is on the twelfth of May, and his birthday is on the eleventh. C. I doubt that our kitty will get along with your cat. D. Call 
Helen is my childhood friend. E. These are my jeans, and these are Miriam's jeans. And now let's check your answers. The kids are yours and mine. The final decision is yours to make. Anne doesn't trust her parents. What's mine is yours, my friend. Don't go through my stuff. It's disrespectful. Shall we go to your place or mine? Her birthday is on the twelfth of May, and his is on the eleventh. I doubt that our kitty would get along with yours. Colin is a childhood friend of mine. These are my jeans, and these are hers. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today. We're going to talk about quantifiers, a few and a little. Let's get started. Now, quantifiers are adjectives and adverbial phrases that give approximate or specific answers to the questions how much and how many. Have a look at the example over here. Sorry. But there isn't much left for you to do here. The word "much" in the sentence is a quantifier, and it tells us how much work is left to do. Now, to answer the questions "how much" and "how many," certain qualifiers can be used with countable nouns such as chairs and apples. While others can be used with uncountable nouns such as tea and money. Have a look at the examples below. How many cousins do you have? The quantifier "many" in the sentence is used with a countable noun, cousins. But in the sentence, how much money did you spend? The quantifier "much" in the sentence is used. With an uncountable noun, which is money. Also note that how much can be used when we want to know the price of something. Now, in this case, we can use how much with a countable noun, both singular and plural noun. Have a look at the example below. How much does this dress cost? Note the dress. Is a countable noun. Note that the quantifiers "a few," "a little," "very few," and "very little" are generally used in affirmative statements, non-negatives, or questions. Let's have a look at quantifiers that are used with countable nouns, such as chairs and apples. Very few, meaning hardly any or not enough. Have a look at the example below. I've got very few friends. I need to be more outgoing. Note that friends is a countable noun. A few, meaning some or enough. Have a look at the example below. I know. That I've got a few friends, but they're the best. Again, friends is a countable noun. And now let's have a look at quantifiers that are used with uncountable nouns, such as tea and money. Very little, meaning hardly any or not enough. Have a look at the example below. We have. Very little tea left. I doubt that it'll be enough for six cups of tea. Note that the word "tea" in the sentence is an uncountable noun. A little, meaning some or enough. Have a look at the sentence below. 
we have a little tea left. Shall I make you some tea then? Again, tea is an uncountable noun. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that to answer the questions how much and how many, certain quantifiers can be used with countable nouns, such as chairs and apples, while others can be used with uncountable nouns, such as tea and money. Now have a look at the questions below and fill in the blank with the appropriate beginning of the question. Days are there in May. Time do you have left? How many days are there in May? How much time do we have left? Also remember that we use very few with countable nouns, such as chairs and apples, in the meaning of hardly any or not enough. And we use very little with uncountable nouns such as tea or money in the meaning of hardly any or not enough. Now have a look at the sentences below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate quantifier. My sister has books. She doesn't like reading. My sister has very few books. She doesn't like reading. Thomas spoke English, so it was difficult to have a conversation with him. Thomas spoke very little English, so it was difficult to have a conversation with him. Also remember that we use a few with countable nouns such as chairs and apples in the meaning of some or enough. And we use a little with uncountable nouns such as tea and money in the meaning of some or enough. Now have a look at the sentences below and fill in the blanks with the appropriate quantifier. Even though there were only houses the village looked welcoming. Even though there were only a few houses, the village looked welcoming. Thomas spoke a little English, so we managed to talk for a bit with him. Here is a short story using the quantifiers a few and a little. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Jane's so lucky. She has few problems with Spanish. Well, she's been studying for four hours a day for the past three years. So it's not like she does very little work. Yeah, but still, she has such a great result. On the other hand, I make few mistakes and people can't understand what I'm saying. It's so frustrating. Then you have to study more. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with a few or a little. A. There is water in the kettle. B. We had snow last winter. C. There were students in the room. D. I have relatives living nearby. E. I speak Italian. And now, read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with few or little. A. Sorry, 
but I've been very busy lately. I have free time. B. This is a very modern city, so there are old buildings. C. Amy isn't very popular. She has friends at school. D. I have very ideas. I doubt I can help you. E. She drinks very water during the day. And now let's check your answers. There is a little water in the kettle. We had a little snow last winter. There were a few students in the room. I have a few relatives living nearby. I speak little Italian. Sorry, but I've been very busy lately. I have little free time. This. Is a very modern city, so there are few old buildings. Amy isn't very popular; she has few friends at school. I have very few ideas. I doubt I can help you. She drinks very little water during the day. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the quantifiers much and many. Let's get started. Remember that quantifiers are adjectives and adverbial phrases that give approximate or specific answers to the questions how much and how many. Have a look at the example over here. Sorry, but there isn't much left for you to do here. Note that the word "much" in the sentence is a quantifier, and it tells us how much work is left to do. Now, to answer the questions "how much" and "how many," certain quantifiers can be used with countable nouns, such as chairs and apples, while others can be used with uncountable nouns, such as tea and money. Now let's have a look at the examples below. How many cousins do you have? Note that the quantifier "many" in this sentence is used with a countable noun, cousin. And in this sentence, how much money did you spend? Note that the quantifier "much" is used with uncountable noun, money. Also note that how much. Can also be used when we want to know the price of something. Now, in this case, we can use how much with countable nouns, both singular and plural. Now, have a look at the example below. How much does this dress cost? Note that the word "dress" is a countable noun. Note. That much and many can be used in affirmative sentences in combination with to and so. Now, in this case, they denote the excessive amount of something. Have a look at the examples below. I don't know what to do with so much sugar. Now, in this sentence, the combination denotes the excessive amount of sugar. And in this sentence, there are too many people in here. The combination of two and many denotes the excessive amount of people in here. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use much with uncountable nouns and many with countable nouns. Now have a look at the list of words below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate quantifier. Much. Or many stories, many stories, water, much water, energy, much energy, people, 
many people. Note that much and many are mainly used in interrogative and negative sentences. Now have a look at the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate quantifier. How dresses do you have? Not. How many dresses do you have? Not many. There isn't space for storage in my apartment. There isn't much space for storage in my apartment. Also note that you can use how much when you want to know the price of something. Now in this case, you can use how much with countable nouns, both singular and plural. Now complete the question below. How much it to cost? How much does it cost? Also note that much and many can be used in affirmative sentences in combination with to and so. Now in this case, they denote the excessive amount of something. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blanks using to or so. There is much to be done and many people to deal with. There is so much to be done and too many people to deal with. Here is a short story using the quantifiers much and many. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. How many friends do you have? I don't have many friends, but I don't think that there is some standard to that. Yeah, I totally get it. Are you all in the same friend group? Yeah, we always have so much fun together, even though that we don't have much free time now. We're all adults, have our own works and duties and responsibilities, so it's difficult to find time for hanging out. Well, many people don't even have that. So I'm happy for you. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with much or many. A. Could you help me wash the dishes? There aren't left. B. I couldn't think of good ideas. C. How dogs does your aunt have? D. How money should I have with me? E. Why is there so smoke in the kitchen? F. How electricity does this fridge use? G. I hope Mrs. Evans won't give us homework today. H. There were so people on the bus that I decided to walk to the mall. I. There are rules to remember when you write an essay. J. We don't see swimmers in the sea in winter. And now, let's check your answers. Could you help me wash the dishes? There aren't many left. I couldn't think of many good ideas. How many dogs does your aunt have? 
How much money should I have with me? Why is there so much smoke in the kitchen? How much electricity does this fridge use? I hope Mrs. Evans won't give us much homework today. There were so many people on the bus that I decided to walk to the mall. There are many rules to remember when you write an essay. We don't see many swimmers in the sea in winter. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the quantifiers a lot and most. Let's get started. Remember that quantifiers are adjectives and adverbial phrases that give approximate or specific answers to the questions how much and how many. Have a look at the example below. Sorry, but there isn't much left for you to do here. Note that the word much in the sentence is a quantifier and it tells us how much work is left to do. Now, to answer the questions, how much and how many, certain quantifiers can be used with countable nouns, such as chairs and apples, while others can be used with uncountable nouns, such as tea or money. Now, have a look at the examples below. How many cousins do you have? Note that the quantifier many in the sentence is used with a countable noun, cousins. But in the sentence, how much money do you spend? The quantifier much is used with an uncountable noun, money. Now, in spoken English and informal writing, when we want to indicate a large quality of something, we tend to use a lot, a lot of, or lots of. Now, a lot means very often or very much. It is used as an adverb. Now, it often comes at the end of a sentence and never before a noun. Have a look at the examples below. My brother plays football a lot, meaning very often, and note that it comes at the end of the sentence. And in this sentence, She's a lot happier after quitting her job. Note that a lot in the sentence comes after a noun, and it tells us how happy she felt after quitting her job. Now, a lot of is more formal than lots of. They both mean a large amount or number of people or things, and they can be used with plural, countable nouns, and with singular, uncountable nouns for affirmatives, negatives, and questions. Now, have a look at the examples below. That's a lot of money. Singular, uncountable noun. There are a lot of great students here. Plural, countable noun. We've got lots of things to do today. Plural, countable noun. Now we use the quantifier most to talk about quantities, amounts, and degrees. We can use it with a noun as a determiner or without a noun as a pronoun. We can also use it with adjectives and adverbs to form the superlative. Now we use most with nouns in the meaning the majority of. If there is no article, demonstrative, or possessive pronoun, we use most right before the noun, as in the example below. Most tap water is drinkable, right before the noun. Now, when we are talking about the majority of a specific set of something, we use most of the plus noun, as in the example below. Most cakes are sweet. Cakes in general. The party was amazing. Kate made most of the cakes herself. 
cakes in the sentence meaning a specific set of cakes at the party. Now we can leave out the noun with most when the noun is obvious from the context. It's in the example below. Students can eat in the cafeteria, but most bring food from home. Most in the sentence meaning students. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use a lot as an adverb in the meaning very often or very much. Now it often comes at the end of a sentence and never before a noun. Now have a look at the sentence below and fill in the blank with the appropriate quantifier. She loves cooking for her boyfriend. A lot. Also note that a lot of is more formal than lots of. But they both mean a large amount or number of people or things. For example, there are a lot of things to do here. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank with a lot of or lots of. People went to see their performance yesterday. Lots of people went to see their performance yesterday. Remember that we use most with nouns in the meaning the majority of. And if there is no article, demonstrative, or possessive pronoun, make sure to use most right before the noun. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank with the appropriate quantifier. Rivers are heavily polluted. Most rivers are heavily polluted. And when we are talking about the majority of a specific set of something, we use most of the plus noun. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank with the appropriate form of the quantifier. Most students don't like doing homework. The students didn't do their homework that day. Most of the students didn't do their homework that day. Also, we can leave out the noun with most when the noun is obvious from context. Now read the following sentence and leave out the noun that can be replaced with most. High school graduates can take a gap year, though most high school graduates still go to college right after graduating. High school graduates can take a gap year, though still go to college right after graduating. The most still go to college right after graduating. Here is a short story using the quantifiers a lot of and most. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I know that most teenagers like partying and going out with their friends, but most of my friends aren't like that. We go to the theaters and museums a lot. That's so interesting. What do you like the most about contemporary museums? Well, most people think that museums are really boring, but it's not true nowadays. A lot of museums are interactive. They are entertaining, engaging, and educational. And people of all ages have lots of fun in there. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with a lot, a lot of, and most. A. My dad spends money on his hobbies. B. Of the children at the school have tablets. C. Generally speaking, pizzas contain meat. D. 
We have to write essays this semester. E. I don't like strawberries. F. Of time I spend reading at home. G. Peter looks younger than his brother. H. Don't worry. We have time to finish it. I. There are smokers in their family. J. Taxis pass down the street, so you'll be able to get home safely. And now, let's check your answers. My dad spends a lot of money on his hobbies. Most of the children at this school have tablets. Generally speaking, most pizzas contain meat. We have to write a lot of essays this semester. I don't like strawberries a lot. Most of the time I spend reading at home. Peter looks a lot younger than his brother. Don't worry, we have a lot of time to finish it. There are a lot of smokers in their family. A lot of taxis pass down the street, so you'll be able to get home safely. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the quantifiers some, any, and enough. Let's get started. Remember that quantifiers are adjectives and adverbial phrases that give approximate or specific answers to the questions how much and how many. Have a look at the example over here. Sorry, but there isn't much left for you to do here. Note that the word much in the sentence is a quantifier and it tells us how much work is left to do. Now, to answer the questions how much and how many, certain quantifiers can be used with countable nouns, such as chairs, apples, while others can be used with uncountable nouns, such as tea and money. Have a look at the examples below. How many cousins do you have? Note that cousins is a countable noun. And in this sentence, how much money did you spend? Money is uncountable. Now we use some and any when we are talking about limited but rather indefinite numbers or quantities. In general, we use some for affirmative sentences and any for negatives and questions, but both can be used with countable and uncountable nouns. Have a look at the examples over here. Jane bought some flowers. Note that we use some in an affirmative sentence. And in this sentence, did Jane buy any flowers? No, she didn't buy any. First sentence is a question. And the second, negative. Note that some can be used for questions, typically offers and requests, if we think the answer will be positive. Have a look at the example over here. Would you like some tea? Note that we ask this question using some when we think the answer will be positive. Yes, I would like some tea. Also note that any can be used in the meaning of it doesn't matter which. Have a look at the example over here. You can take any bus. They all go to the center. Meaning it doesn't matter which bus you take. Now we use enough to indicate sufficiency 
while negative sentences it means less than sufficient or less than necessary. Have a look at the examples below. I'll take your T-shirt. It's big enough to fit me. Now, in this sentence, enough is used to indicate sufficiency. And in this sentence, sorry, but I can't go with you. I don't have enough money for that. Enough in this sentence is used to mean less than sufficient. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember to use some when you are talking about limited, but rather indefinite number or quantities. Also, use some for affirmative sentences. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate quantifier. Tom is busy. He has work to do. Tom is busy. He has some work to do. Also remember to use any when you are talking about limited but rather indefinite number of quantities. Now make sure to use any for negatives and questions. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate quantifier. Did he show photos? No, he didn't show. Did he show any photos? No, he didn't show any. Note that some can be used for questions, typically offers and requests, if we think the answer will be positive. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate quantifier. Can I have sugar, please? Can I have some sugar, please? Any can be used in the meaning of it doesn't matter which. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate quantifier. You can't drop by time you want. You can't drop by any time you want. Remember that we use enough to indicate sufficiency, while in negative sentences it means less than sufficient or less than necessary. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate quantifier. You're old to understand your parents. I don't have space in my apartment for a dog. You're old enough to understand your parents. I don't have enough space in my apartment for a dog. Here is a short story using the quantifiers some, any, and enough. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Do we have any cookies? No, I don't think we have any cookies left. There were some candies though. Can I have some? Yeah, sure. And can I have some sugar too? This coffee isn't sweet enough. I thought it was sweet enough for you, but yeah. Take some sugar if you want. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with some, any, or enough. A. Have you seen interesting movies recently? No, not really. B. Can I have milk in my coffee? See, this game cost $10 and I had $5.
I didn't have money for it, so I had to borrow from my friend. D. I'm going out with friends of mine tonight. E. I have questions concerning my project, so I'll call you later. F. Mary doesn't have spare pillows at her place. You should take yours if you want to stay over. G. Which dress should I buy? You can take. I really don't care. At. You aren't working hard. I don't worry. This is to keep me awake. J. If you need sugar, it's in the white cabinet in the kitchen. And now let's check your answers. Have you seen any interesting movies recently? No, not really. Can I have some milk in my coffee? This game cost ten dollars, and I had five dollars. I didn't have enough money for it, so I had to borrow some from my friend. I'm going out with some friends of mine tonight. I have some questions concerning my project, so I'll call you later. Mary doesn't have any spare pillows at her place. You should take yours if you want to stay over. Which dress should I buy? You can take any. I really don't care. You aren't working hard enough. Don't worry. This is enough to keep me awake. If you need some sugar, it's in the white cabinet in the kitchen. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the distributives both, either, and neither. Let's get started. Distributive determiners, or simply distributives, refer to a group of people or things and to individual members of the group. Note that they show different ways of looking at the individuals within a group and they express how something is distributed, shared, or divided. Have a look at the example over here. Both of us like Mexican food. Note that both in this sentence is a distributive, and it refers to the pair who like Mexican food. Now both refers to the whole pair and is equivalent to one and the other. Both can be used with plural nouns on its own, or it can be followed by of, with, or without an article. Now, when followed by a plural pronoun, both must be separated from the pronoun by of. Have a look at the examples below. Both of my parents approve of me going to college. Note that both in this sentence is used with a plural noun parents, and it can't be with or without of, both my parents. In this sentence, however, I told both of them to give me a call. Them is a pronoun, and so both must be followed by of. Note that both cannot be used with singular nouns, because it refers to two things. Have a look at the sentences below. Both my sister likes traveling. Now this sentence would be incorrect because sister is in a singular form. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use both as an equivalent to one and the other. 
and you can use both with plural nouns on its own or it can be followed by of, with or without an article. Now when followed by a plural pronoun, both must be separated from the pronoun by of. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate distributive. The parties signed the papers on Monday. Both of the parties signed the papers on Monday. Now, either is positive, and when used alone refers to one of the two members of the pair. It is equivalent to one or the other. Because it refers to just one member of a pair, remember that either must be used before a singular noun. Now, it can also be used with a plural noun or pronoun, if followed by of. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the distributive either. I haven't been to those cafes. I haven't been to either of those cafes. Also remember that either can be used with or in a construction that talks about each member of the pair in turn. Now the meaning remains the same, but in this case either is not functioning as a distributive. It is functioning as a conjunction. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of either. Stay with me. Go away. Either stay with me or go away. Note that neither is negative and when used alone refers to the whole pair. It is equivalent to not one or the other. And because it refers to just one member of a pair, neither must be used before a singular noun. Now it can also be used with a plural noun or pronoun, but it must be followed by off. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the distributive neither. Classmate wanted to work on a project together with Peter. Neither classmate wanted to work on the project together with Peter. Also note that neither can be used with nor in a construction that talks about each member of the pair in turn. Now the meaning remains the same, but in this case neither is not functioning as a distributive. It is functioning as a conjunction. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of neither. Mom, Dad came to our graduation ceremony. Neither mom nor dad came to our graduation ceremony. Here is a short story using the distributives both, either, and neither. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Do you want ice cream or cake? I want neither this nor that. Okay. Do you want tea or coffee? I'll have either juice or milk. Neither thing is good for you. Either stop being picky or I'll stop treating you. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and complete them with both, either, or neither. A. Where is Kim? Is she at work or at home? She's on vacation in Peru. B. Do you want tea or coffee? I'll have what you want. C. 
C. This dress or that green one, we can't afford of them. D. We are huge fans of their music. Of us want to go to their concert. E. Is it the 13th or the 14th today? It's the 16th. And now, rewrite the following sentences using both and, either or, neither nor. A. I don't have time and desire to go to the party. B. Adam was late and Kate was late too. C. Is he James or John? I don't remember his name, but it's one of the two. D. She didn't smile. She didn't cry. E. We can't stay for a little longer or leave right now. It's up to you. And now, let's check your answers. Where is Kim? Is she at work or at home? Neither. She's on vacation in Peru. Do you want tea or coffee? Either. I'll have what you want. Either this dress or that green one. We can't afford both of them. We are huge fans of their music. Both of us want to go to their concert. Is it the 13th or the 14th today? Neither. It's the 16th. I have neither time nor desire to go to the party. Both Adam and Kate were late. His name is either James or John. She neither smiled nor cried. We can either stay for a little longer or leave right now. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the present participle. Let's get started. Now, most commonly, we use the present participle, ing, as an element in all continuous verb forms, the present continuous, the past continuous, etc. Now, the auxiliary verb indicates the tense, while the present participle remains unchanged. Have a look at the example over here. I was playing computer games all night. Now, this sentence is in the past continuous was playing. Now when a verb ends in E, we get rid of the E and simply add ing as in like, liking, right, writing. And when a verb ends in a vowel plus consonant, we double the consonant and then add ing as in sit, sitting, swim, swimming. And when a verb ends in IE, we change the IE into Y and then add ING, as in lie, lying, die, dying. Now the present participle is used not only to form verb tenses, it can also be used A after verbs of movement and position. For example, she went shopping after a verb of movement and position went they came running towards me after a verb of movement and position again came b 
after verbs of perception in the pattern of verb plus object plus present participle to indicate the action being perceived as in the examples below we saw him mowing the lawn verb saw object him present participle mowing liz heard someone singing verb object present participle c after verbs of movement action or position to indicate parallel activity it's in the examples below he sat looking at the pedestrians doing two things at once july walks reading his newspaper d as an adjective have you heard of that amazing movie note that amazing in this sentence is used as an adjective a word describing the noun movie the family was trapped inside the burning barn again as an adjective describing the noun barn e to explain the cause or reason the present participle is used instead of a phrase starting with as since because have a look at the examples below feeling hungry i made myself a sandwich meaning i made myself a sandwich because i was hungry knowing that his roommate was coming james cleaned the living room meaning that james cleaned the living room as he knew that his roommate was coming now let's review and practice a bit remember that when a verb ends in e get rid of the e and then add ing and when a verb ends with a vowel plus a consonant double the consonant and then add ing and when a verb ends with ie change ie to y and then add ing now provide the present participle form of the words below begin beginning shop shopping no knowing run running go going feel feeling come coming sit sitting remember that we use the present participle after verbs of perception to indicate the action being perceived now read the following sentence and provide the present participle form of the verb in the bracket i watched her to paint the portrait of my mom i watched her painting the portrait of my mom also remember that we use the present participle after verbs of movement action or position to indicate parallel activities now read the following sentence and provide the present participle form of the verb in the bracket bella works out to listen to music bella works out listening to music note that we also use the present participle as an adjective now read the following sentence and provide the present participle form of the verb in the bracket honestly i think that these classes are super to be bored honestly i think that these classes are super boring we also use the present participle instead of a phrase starting with as since because to explain the cause or reason now read the following sentence and provide the present participle form of the verb in the bracket minnie ate a chocolate bar to think her mother was in another room 
Minnie ate a chocolate bar, thinking her mother was in another room. Here is a short story using the present participle. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I can't believe this book can be so boring. I bought it thinking that it was a bestseller. What are you talking about? It's absolutely amazing. Well, believe it or not, but I fell asleep reading the first chapter. Knowing you, it's not a surprise. You told me that you read books right before going to bed. I'm just too busy during the day. Maybe I can listen to the audio book. I can try it while walking to work. Yeah, that's a good idea. And now it's time for you to practice. On your own, read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with shopping, thinking, watching, or crossing. A. I called the cops. The lady was mugged. B. Samuel likes to bake cooking shows. C. Lily needed to go with her friends. D. Amanda saw me the street. And now rewrite the following sentences using the phrases in the brackets. Note that the meaning should remain the same. A. Feeling. I went to bed early because I was sleepy. B. Knowing. I knew the importance of the project, so I was working the whole night. C. Thinking. I thought I could fix my phone, but I. Broke the screen instead. And now provide answers for the following questions. A. Do you listen to music commuting to work? B. Have you ever watched someone painting a portrait in the streets? C. What is the most interesting thing about growing up? And now let's check your answers. I called the cops, thinking the lady was mugged. Samuel likes to bake, watching cooking shows. Lily needed to go shopping with her friends. Amanda saw me crossing the street. Feeling sleepy, I went to bed early. Knowing the importance of the project, I was working the whole night. Thinking I could fix my phone, I broke the screen instead. Sample answers: Yes, I listen to music commuting to work. No, I have never watched someone painting a portrait in the streets. The most interesting thing about growing up is how your perception of the world changes. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the past continuous tense. Let's get started. Now we use the past continuous when we describe a situation or several situations in progress happening at the same time in the past. Now this is often contrasted with a sudden event in the past simple. Have a 
look at the example over here. I was working on my computer and my brother was reading a book when we heard a loud bang on the door. Now we use the past continuous tense in this sentence to describe the two things were happening at the same time when there was a loud bang on the door. I was working and my brother was reading a book. Now to form the past continuous tense we use was or were plus verb ing. Wasn't, weren't plus verb ing. Have a look at the examples below. Positive sentence. Jim was playing video games all night. Negative form. Jim was not playing video games all night. He wasn't playing video games all night. Question form. Was Jim playing video games all night? Another question. Why was he playing video games all night? We can also use the past continuous tense with such phrases as at 7 o'clock, for 2 hours, in January, last week, all night, etc. Have a look at the example below. Kate was trying to find a nice apartment in her area for 5 months. Was trying for 5 months. We can also use the past continuous tense with when and while, meaning during that time. Have a look at the examples below. While they were waiting for the train, it started to rain. James broke his finger when he was playing basketball. Now, non-continuous verbs such as to love, hate, know, want, etc. are not used in any continuous tenses. Make sure to use the past simple instead. Have a look at the examples below. I was having fun at the party, but Kim was wanting to go home. Now, this sentence would be incorrect because we cannot use want in a continuous tense. The correct form would be, I was having fun at the party, but Kim wanted to go home. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use the past continuous when we describe a situation or several situations in progress happening at the same time in the past. Now this is often contrasted with a sudden event in the past simple. Now read the following sentence and decide which sentence describes background situation and which sentence describes a sudden event. While Emily was cooking dinner, the phone rang. Background situation? Sudden event, the phone rang. Also remember that we use the past form of to be and the ing form of the main verb to make sentences in the past continuous. Now read the following sentence and provide the past continuous tense of the verbs in the bracket. Mike to paint the walls in the living room and to play with her toys there, Helen to get ready for a date, and Nancy to take pictures of that busy evening. Mike was painting the walls in the living room. Anne was playing with her toys there. Helen was getting ready for a date, and Nancy was taking pictures of that busy evening. Remember that to form questions by inverting the subject and to be, and to form negatives with to be plus not. Use contracted forms. 
Now read the following sentences and provide the correct form of the past continuous tense of the words in the bracket. What you to do at 7 p.m. yesterday? I not to celebrate my friend's B-Day like I wanted to. I to help my boss at work instead. What were you doing at 7 p.m. yesterday? I wasn't celebrating my friend's B-Day like I wanted to. I was helping my boss at work instead. And now, find the time markers in the following sentences. It was snowing heavily yesterday. I was making snowmen with my kids the whole day. Yesterday. The whole day. And now, read the following sentence and fill in the blank with either when or while. Peter fell asleep. He was watching TV. Peter fell asleep when he was watching TV. Here is a short story using the past continuous tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Nate, where were you yesterday? I was trying to reach you the whole evening. Sorry, Sam. It was such a crazy day. Why so? Well... My college project was due, so I was running all over the city collecting information. I needed to write an article, so I was meeting up with people. I was even interviewing strangers in the streets. That sounds like a stressful day. You bet. While I was interviewing one old lady, a cop came up to me and wanted to see my ID. But that's okay. Did you finish your project at least? Thankfully, yes. I was working on it the whole day. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct phrase. A. Last summer, I was swimming, swam, in the river every day. B. While I took was taking a shower, the phone rang, ringed. C. Anne was breaking, broke a cup. When she washed, was washing the dishes. And now... Read the following sentences and complete them with a suitable time marker. At, while, when, or in. A. Sally was working on her thesis, 8 o'clock. B. Tom was sleeping peacefully in his bed. His mom took a picture of him. C. I was living in Italy, 2009. D. A burglar broke into their house. They were watching TV. Now answer the following questions. A. What were you doing at 5 p.m. last night? B. What were you doing when you heard a phone call? C. What was your family doing when you went on a vacation together?
Now, let's check your answers. Last summer, I was swimming in the river every day. While I was taking a shower, the phone rang. Anne broke a cup when she was washing the dishes. Sally was working on her thesis at 8 o'clock. Tom was sleeping peacefully in his bed when his mom took a picture of him. I was living in Italy in 2009. A burglar broke into their house while they were watching TV. Sample answers. I was watching a movie with my friends. I was having a bath when I heard a phone call. My family was spending time at the beach when we went on a vacation together. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the present continuous tense. Let's get started. Now we use the present continuous when we talk about something happening at the time of speaking or actions happening around now, even though not at the moment of speaking. Note that this tense also has some future meaning. Have a look at the example over here. Hey, what are you doing? I'm working on my thesis. I am graduating this semester. Note that in this sentence, the present continuous tense is used to talk about something happening at the moment of speaking and the future. Now, to form the present continuous tense, we use to be plus verb ing. The negative to be plus not plus verb ing. Have a look at the examples below. Positive sentence. He is sleeping on the couch in the living room. Negative form. He is not sleeping on the couch in the living room. Or he isn't sleeping there. Question form. Where is he? Is he sleeping? Now when verbs end in E to form the present continuous tense, we get rid of the E and add ing. For example, like, liking, right, writing. And when a verb ends in a vowel plus consonant, we double the consonant plus ing. For example, sit, sitting, swim, swimming. And when a verb ends in IE, we turn IE into Y and then add ING, as in lie, lying, die, dying. We can also use the present continuous with phrases such as now, right now, at the moment, today, this week, etc. Have a look at the example over here. I'm quite busy this year, as I'm trying to start my small business. Note that we use the present continuous to talk about changing situations. Have a look at the examples below. The population of the world increases very fast. Note that the increase of the population of the world is a changing situation. And so we must say the population of the world is increasing very fast. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that when a verb ends with E, get rid of the E and then add ING to form the present continuous tense. And when a verb ends with a vowel plus a consonant, make sure to double the consonant and then add ING. And when a verb ends with IE, Replace it with Y and then add ING. Now provide the present continuous form of the words below. Shop Shopping Study Studying Stand Standing Stop Stopping Get Getting, 
lie, lying, fly, flying, drive, driving. Remember that we use the present form of to be and the ing form of the main verb to make sentences in the present continuous. Now read the following sentence and provide the present continuous form of the words in the bracket. I to fry potatoes, my mom to wash the dishes, and my brother to wait patiently for dinner to be ready. I am frying potatoes, my mom is washing the dishes, and my brothers are patiently waiting for dinner to be ready. Now make sure to form questions by inverting the subject and to be, and to form negatives with to be plus not. Use contracted forms. Now read the following sentence and provide the present continuous form of the words in the bracket. It to rain outside. No, it not to rain. It's a bit cloudy for kids to play outside anyway. Is it raining outside? No, it isn't raining. It's a bit cloudy, but kids are playing outside anyway. Now find time markers in the following sentence. Samantha is taking Chinese classes this year. She is studying a lot. This year. Also note that we use the present continuous to talk about changing situations. Now read the following sentence and provide the present continuous form of the word in the bracket. The economic situation is already bad, but it to get worse. The economic situation is already bad, but it's getting worse. Here is a short story using the present continuous tense. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Hello, Mike. How are you doing these days? Hi, Sam. I'm fine, thanks. I'm doing an internship at one publishing house. Oh, really? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm learning a lot of small but crucial details. How about you? Well, I'm not working at the moment. I'm trying to find a job in my field. It's a difficult task. Yeah, I totally get you. Well, I have to go now. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck to you too. See you. Bye. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct phrase. A. Be quiet. I try. I'm trying to concentrate. B. Sorry, I can't help you right now. I be fixing. I'm fixing my dad's computer. C. It's very warm today. Why you are? Are you wearing a coat? And now. Read the following sentences and complete them with a suitable phrase: beginning, becoming, doing, or giving. A. Don't disturb Anne. She is her taxes. B. This is brilliant, isn't it? Their, their best performance.
C. At first, I didn't like my job, but um, to enjoy it. D. Ocean pollution is a real problem. And now, provide answers for the following questions. A. What are you doing right now? B. Is there anything interesting happening in your country? C. Do you know what your family is doing now? And now, let's check your answers. Be quiet. I am trying to concentrate. Sorry, I can't help you right now. I am fixing my dad's computer. It's very warm today. Why are you wearing a coat? Don't disturb Anne. She is doing her taxes. This is brilliant, isn't it? They're giving their best performance. At first, I didn't like my job, but I'm beginning to enjoy it. Ocean pollution is becoming a real problem. Sample answers. I am doing my homework right now. There isn't anything interesting happening in my country now. My family is having a dinner party today. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the future continuous tense. Let's get started. Now we use the future continuous to say that we will be in the middle of doing something at a certain time in the future. Remember that we often use this tense when we compare what we are doing now with what we will be doing in the future. Have a look at the example over here. The movie starts at 8 and ends at 10. At 9, I will be watching the movie. Now, the future continuous tense is used in the sentence to talk about what I will be doing in the near future. To form the future continuous tense, use will plus be plus verb ing. The negative won't plus be plus verb ing. Have a look at the examples below. Positive sentence, Sarah will be flying home at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Negative sentence, Sarah will not be flying home at 5 o'clock tomorrow or she won't be flying home at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Question form. Will Sarah be flying home at 5 o'clock tomorrow? Another question. Where will she be flying at 5 o'clock tomorrow? Now we can also use the future continuous tense with phrases such as, at 5 o'clock, at that time tomorrow, this evening, in 5 years time, etc. is in the example below. Where will you be living in 3 years time? Future. Note that we also use the future continuous to say that something will definitely happen in the future. Have a look at the example below. I'll be going to the shop later. Can I get you anything? Note that the future continuous tense is used in the sentence because I will definitely go shopping later. Now let's compare will be doing with the other continuous forms. Jane has an ordinary 9 to 5 job. At 11 o'clock yesterday, 
she was working. This sentence is in the past continuous. At eleven o'clock today, she is working. Present continuous. At eleven o'clock tomorrow, she will be working. Future continuous. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use will plus be plus the ing form of the verb to make sentences into the future continuous. Now read the following sentence and provide the future continuous form of the words in the bracket. It'll be a busy morning for me. I to cook, I to clean, I to wash the dishes, and I to get my siblings ready for school. It'll be a busy morning for me. I'll be cooking, I'll be cleaning, I'll be washing the dishes, and I'll be getting my siblings ready for school. Remember to form questions by inverting the subject and will, and to form negatives with will not or won't be plus the ing form of the verb. Use contracted forms. Now read the following sentences and provide the future continuous form of the words in the bracket. Why you to work on your project that late? Well, I not to work on it alone at least. Why will you be working on your project that late? Well, I won't be working on it alone at least. Now read the following sentence and find time markers. In one year's time, I will be traveling across Europe. One year's time. Remember to use the future continuous to say that something will definitely happen in the future. Now read the following sentence and provide the future continuous form of the word in the bracket. You can't take my laptop. I to use it during my presentation today. You can't take my laptop. I will be using it during my presentation today. Note the difference between will be doing and the other continuous forms. Now read the following sentence and provide the appropriate continuous form of the words in the bracket. Yesterday, I to wait for my paycheck, and tomorrow, I to go on a cruise. Yesterday, I was waiting for my paycheck, and tomorrow, I will be going on a cruise. Here is a short story using the future continuous tense. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Dan, will you be using your bike this afternoon? Yes, you can't take it. Will you be going outside then? Yes. I'll be going out with my friends tonight. Do you need something? Will you be passing the post office? Most probably. Can you get my package? Okay. I hope this package is not heavy. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct phrase. A. We won't move. Be moving to our new apartment at this time on Thursday. B. This time next week, Susan will play. Will be playing football with her friends. C. Where will Sam? Sam will be working. In one year's time.
And now, read the following sentences and write the correct form. A. You'll recognize her. She to wear a red dress. B. Everyone to sleep at that hour. C. Fred to work as a lead developer in four years' time. D. At eight o'clock tomorrow morning, I to take my son to daycare. And now, answer the following questions. A. What will you be doing at 7 p.m. tomorrow? B. What will you be doing in five years' time? C. What will people be celebrating on the 1st of January? Now let's check your answers. We won't be moving to our new apartment at this time on Thursday. This time next week, Susan will be playing football with her friends. Where will Sam be working in one year's time? You'll recognize her. She'll be wearing a red dress. Everyone will be sleeping at that hour. Fred will be working as a lead developer in four years' time. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, I will be taking my son to daycare. Sample answers. I'll be driving to Boston this time tomorrow. I'll be working at a tech company. People will be celebrating New Year on the 1st of January. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about model verbs, must, may, and might. Let's get started. Now, we use model verbs to show if we believe something is certain, probable, or possible, or not. Remember that we use models to ask permission, make requests and offers, etc. Now model verbs fall into the category of auxiliary verbs, which are also known as helping verbs. Now it means that they are used together with a main verb to give grammatical information and additional meaning to a sentence. Now we can use the model verb must, a, to express obligation, duty, or prohibition. Now this also refers to laws and regulations. Have a look at the examples below. You must wear a seatbelt at all times. Now in this sentence, must is used to express obligation or duty. And in this sentence, you mustn't use your smartphone while driving. In this sentence, mustn't is used to express prohibition. B to emphasize the necessity of something. People must drink a lot of water during the day. Necessity. C. To express our certainty in something being true. For example, Look, there are puddles everywhere. It must have rained. Meaning that I am certain that it has rained. The same in this sentence, you are still working? You must be tired. D. To give a strong recommendation. You must listen to the song. It's so catchy. Strong recommendation. Now you can use the model verb may, a, to give permission or prohibit something. For example, if you have finished the test, you may leave the room, giving permission. You may not park here, 
prohibiting. B. To ask for permission. More polite than can. May I use your bathroom, please? C. To express wishes. May you both live happily. D. In academic or scientific language to refer to things that typically happen in certain situations. For example, drivers may feel tired after driving for three hours straight. Note that we usually use the model verbs may and might without a significant difference in meaning when expressing possibility. However, might often implies a smaller chance of something happening. Have a look at the example over here. I might go to the movies tonight. I'm not sure. Smaller chance of me going to the movies tonight. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use must to express obligation, duty, or prohibition, to emphasize the necessity of something, and to express certainty in something being true. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate model verb. You gossip about your co-workers. You mustn't gossip about your co-workers. Kate, go to the doctor. She looks ill. Kate must go to the doctor. She looks ill. John didn't call me last night. He have been busy. John didn't call me last night. He must have been busy. Also, remember that we use may to ask for permission and we use may or might to express possibility. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate model verb. I open the curtains. It's quite dark here. May I open the curtains? It's quite dark here. We Go to China for our honeymoon. We are still thinking about it. We might go to China for our honeymoon. We are still thinking about it. Here is a short story using model verbs. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Do you know why I've been feeling so sick lately? I'm not a doctor. You must set an appointment with one. No, I'm fine. I must be tired from working 12 hours a day. It may be, but you must go to the doctor anyway. I'll try to sleep more. You know that it might get worse, right? Should I come along? That would be great, actually. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with must or may. A. The lights are out. They have gone out. B. I borrow your pen, please? C. You go once you fill out the papers. D. We go now, otherwise we'll miss our flight. And now, match the following sentences. A. You may not cross the street here. B. 
B. Will you be at home at eight? C. May I borrow your red dress? One. I might go to a dinner party next week. Two. The traffic is crazy. Three. I might stop by. And now, recreate the situations. Form sentences using must or might. A. Your friend is trying to park his car. Tell him that there is a sign, no parking nearby. B. Your sister is baking a cake. Tell her to follow the recipe. C. You want to go to the movies with your friend, but you're not sure if it is still on. And now, let's check your answers. The lights are out. They must have gone out. May I borrow your pen, please? You may go once you fill out the papers. We must go now. Otherwise, we'll miss our flight. You may not cross the street here. The traffic is crazy. Will you be at home at 8? I might stop by. May I borrow your red dress? I might go to a dinner party next week. You mustn't park here. You must follow the recipe. We might go to the movies. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the model verbs shall and should. Let's get started. Remember that we use model verbs to show if we believe something is certain, probable, or possible, or not. Now we also use models to ask permission, make requests and offers, etc. Remember that model verbs fall into the category of auxiliary verbs, which are also known as helping verbs. Now it means that they are used together with a main verb to give grammatical information and additional meaning to a sentence. Nowadays, the most common use of shall in everyday English is in questions that serve as offers or suggestions. For example, shall I? Shall we? Have a look at the examples below. Shall I order some pizza? Shall we go now? It's getting late. Now you can use the model verb should, A, to give advice, a recommendation, or a suggestion. For example, I think you should study more. B, to express that a situation is likely to happen in the present or in the future, more like a prediction. Have a look at the examples below. Kelly should be at home by now. You can stop by. I ordered some t-shirts 10 days ago. They should come in mail this week. C. To express an obligation. However, it's not as strong as must. Now, it is used instead of must to make rules, orders, or instructions sound more polite. Have a look at the example below. You should never lie to your parents. D. To say that something was expected in the past but didn't happen. Now, in this case, we use should plus have plus past participle. As in the example below, I should have studied more, but I was too lazy. Now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use shall to make offers or suggestions. 
and we use should to give advice, a recommendation, or a suggestion. We also use should to express that a situation is likely to happen in the present or in the future. Now read the following sentences and provide the appropriate model verb. We buy cupcakes or one big cake. Shall we buy cupcakes or one big cake? She wear black. This color doesn't suit her. She shouldn't wear black. This color doesn't suit her. It's really windy today. It rain tomorrow. It's really windy today. It should rain tomorrow. We also use should to express an obligation. Also remember that we use should to say that something was expected in the past but didn't happen. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate model verb. You listen to the teacher's instructions in class. You should listen to the teacher's instructions in class. Barry have stopped Allison from buying another car. Barry should have stopped Allison from buying another car. Here is a short story using the model verbs shall and should. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Shall we go to this new bar? Yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. Some bad should perform there tonight. Oh, sounds interesting. Shall we go now? I think it might get a bit crowded on a Friday night. Yeah, we should go now. I don't want to be somewhere in the back the whole night. Shall I get a taxi? No, it's fine. It's just a 15 minute walk from us. Now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with shall or should. A. We go now or we'll miss our train. B. I give him a call. He seemed nice. C. You pay more attention to your health. D. No one disrespect another person's opinion. And now, Match the sentences below. A. Shall I call in sick? B. You should go to the doctor. C. Shall we go to the park? 1. I'm not feeling well. 2. The weather is amazing. 3. It might be something serious. Now provide answers for the following questions. A. What should we do in case of fire? B. What shouldn't people do when they are having an argument? C. 
What should people do to become happy? Now let's check your answers. We should go now or we'll miss our train. Shall I give him a call? He seemed nice. You should pay more attention to your health. No one should disrespect another person's opinion. Shall I call in sick? I'm not feeling well. You should go to the doctor. It might be something serious. Shall we go to the park? The weather is amazing. Sample answers. We should call 911. They shouldn't call each other names. People should be themselves to become happy. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the model verbs will and would. Let's get started. Remember that we use model verbs to show if we believe something is certain, probable, or possible, or not. Now we also use models to ask permission, make requests and offers, etc. Remember the model verbs fall into the category of auxiliary verbs, which are also known as helping verbs. Now it means that they are used together with a main verb to give grammatical information and additional meaning to a sentence. Now we can use the model verb will, A, to express rapid decision, as in the example below. Which one? Hmm, I will have the tuna sandwich. B, to express thoughts or beliefs about the future. For example, I think they will remain friends forever. C. To make an offer, a promise, or a threat. For example, I will not disappoint you. D. To talk about predictable behavior. For example, he will eat chocolate when he feels anxious. Remember that we use won't when someone refuses to do something. Have a look at the example below. I tried reassuring him, but he won't listen to me. Refuses to listen. And we can use the model verb would, A, as a polite invitation or to offer. For example, would you like to spend this evening together with me? B. To describe a prediction. For example, it would be nice to be a little bit funnier. C. Not to sound impolite when disagreeing with someone. For example, I wouldn't put it like that. D. To describe past habits. For example, she would fall asleep when she was on a train. Remember that we use wouldn't when someone refuses to do something. For example, James said that he wouldn't help us at all. Refuse to help. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use will to express thoughts or beliefs about the future and to make an offer, a promise, or a threat. And we use would as a polite invitation or offer. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate model verb. I guess we live on Mars someday. I guess we will live on Mars someday. If you don't stop playing around, I be very angry. I will be very angry. You like some coffee? Would you like some coffee? 
Also remember that we use would not to sound impolite when we disagree with someone and when we want to describe past habits. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate model verb. I like to point out that you need to make a few changes there. I would like to point out that you need to make a few changes there. She called me at night whenever she had a fight with her boyfriend. She would call me at night whenever she had a fight with her boyfriend. Here is a short story using the model verbs will and would. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Would you like to go to the movies tonight? I certainly would. I think you'd like this one. You like comedies, right? That's right. When I was a kid, I would watch comedies from the 90s. It would be cool to see some older movies on a big screen. Yeah, that would be cool. Shall we go now, though? I'll make a quick call and we can go then, okay? Yes, sure. Take your time. And now. Time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with will or would. A. I call you later. Sorry. B. Chris hang up whenever I brought up that issue. C. If I had a chance, I become an astronaut. D. We be very grateful if you had sent these prints immediately. And now match the following sentences. A. I don't mind if you stay. B. Will you say something? C. Will he ever grow up? 1. You can't ignore my questions. 2. It would be amazing, actually. 3. He is so immature. Answer the following questions. A. What will you do tomorrow? B. Do you think that you will win the lottery one day? C. What would you do if you were a mayor of your city? And now, let's check your answers. I will call you later. Sorry. Chris would hang up whenever I brought up that issue. If I had a chance, I would become an astronaut. We would be very grateful if you could send these prints immediately. I don't mind if you stay. It would be amazing, actually. Will you say anything? You can't ignore my questions. Will he grow up? He is so immature. Sample answers. I will stay at home and relax. No, 
I don't think that I'll win the lottery one day. If I were a mayor of my city, I would improve the ecological situation. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about limiting adjectives. Let's get started. An adjective is a word or set of words that modifies, in other words, describes a noun or pronoun. Remember that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify. Have a look at the example over here. This is a cute cat. This cat is cute. Now the word cute is an adjective and modifies the noun cat. Note that in the first sentence, the adjective comes before the noun cat, and in the second sentence, it comes after the noun. Now, limiting adjectives help to define or limit a noun or pronoun by telling which one, what kind, or how many. Have a look at the example over here. This sandwich is delicious. Note that this is a limiting adjective and it defines the noun sandwich. It tells us which sandwich is delicious. Now there are several categories of limiting adjectives. Let's have a look at those categories. A. Articles are the most commonly used adjectives. A and the indicate whether the noun is used indefinitely or definitely. Have a look at the example below. This is a bed, a mirror, a wardrobe, and an easel in the room. B. Demonstrative adjectives are adjectives that are used to modify a noun so that we know which specific person, place, or thing is mentioned. Now the most common demonstrative adjectives are this, that, these, and those. Have a look at the example below. This is July and that girl over there is Judy. C. Numerals can function as limiting adjectives, limiting the noun to a specific number or amount. Have a look at the example below. One chocolate bar, two cups of coffee, and ten hours of hard work were put into this. D. Indefinite adjectives are used to describe a noun in a nonspecific sense. Now the most common indefinite adjectives are any, each, few, many, much, most, several, and some. Have a look at the example below. There were several people in the room. Several describing the noun people in a nonspecific way. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use articles a and the to indicate whether the noun is used indefinitely or definitely. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate article. There is laptop, cup, open envelope, and pile of books on table. It is total mess. There is a laptop, a cup, an open envelope, and a pile of books on the table. It is a total mess. Also remember that we use demonstrative adjectives this, that, these, those to indicate which specific person, place, or thing is mentioned. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate demonstrative adjective. Shoes are quite nice. Did go well with red dress. These or those shoes are quite nice. They'd go well with this 
or that red dress. Remember that we use numerals to limit the noun to a specific number or amount. Now read the following sentences and underline these numerals. Sorry, but we can't throw a party for one person. We should invite at least 20 people. One, twenty. Remember that we use indefinite adjectives any, each, few, many, much, most, several, and some to describe a noun by showing an element of uncertainty. Now read the following sentence and underline these adjectives. The most important thing in the world is to be humane. Most. Remember not to confuse indefinite adjectives with indefinite pronouns. Now, indefinite adjectives modify nouns or pronouns, while indefinite pronouns are stand alone pronouns. Now, read the following sentences and decide in which sentence the words in bold are used as an indefinite adjective or as an indefinite pronoun. There are only a few people left. There are only a few left. In the first sentence, a few is an indefinite adjective. And in the second sentence, a few is an indefinite pronoun. Here is a short story using limiting adjectives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Mom, do we have any cookies left? No, we don't. There is a single piece of pie in the fridge. No, I don't want that. I wanted to make a cheesecake, so I needed some cookies to make the dough. I'm sorry, dear, but you have to go to the shop then if you want to make this cheesecake today. Hmm, this can wait. I'll finish the pie then. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with A, an, or the. A. Do you live in house? No, I live in apartment. B. Weather was amazing last month. C. Anne didn't want to come in as there was dog in room D would you like apple and now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with this or these a. Whose shoes are? B. Is a great coat. C. Our beloved sons. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with some or any. A. I got nice presents for you. B. She's too bossy, so she doesn't have friends.
See, there isn't juice left. And now, let's check your answers. Do you live in a house? No, I live in an apartment. The weather was amazing last month. Anne didn't want to come in as there was a dog in the room. Would you like an apple? Whose shoes are these? This is a great coat. These are our beloved sons. I got some nice presents for you. She's too bossy, so she doesn't have any friends. There isn't any juice left. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about pronominal adjectives. Let's get started. Remember that an adjective is a word or set of words that modifies and other words describes a noun or pronoun. Also note that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify. Have a look at the example over here. This is a cute cat. This cat is cute. Note that the word cute is an adjective and it's used to describe or modify the noun cat. Now in the first sentence, the adjective comes before the noun cat. And in the second sentence, it comes after the noun cat. Now limiting adjectives help to define or limit a noun or pronoun by telling which one, what kind, or how many. Have a look at the example over here. This sandwich is delicious. Now, this is a limiting adjective, and it defines the noun sandwich. It tells us which sandwich is delicious. Now, in this category, there are pronominal adjectives. Now, these adjectives are pronouns which are used to modify nouns. Have a look at the examples below. This book is interesting. Now, this is a pronominal adjective. It modifies the noun book. And in this sentence, this is an interesting book. This is a pronoun. It represents the noun book. Now, pronominal adjectives can be subdivided into the following groups. A. Demonstrative adjectives. This, that, these, and those. Have a look at the examples below. Those shoes were old-fashioned. These shoes are much better. B. Possessive adjectives. My, your, his, her, its, our, or their. For example, their cat likes to sleep on the floor. C. Distributive adjectives, such as each, every, either, or neither. Have a look at the example over here. Every attempt was met with suspicion. D. Interrogative adjectives, such as which, what, whose. For example, Whose pants are these? E. Indefinite adjectives, such as some, any, all, few, several, many, both, little, much, more, and most. Have a look at the example over here. Both parents were present. Indefinite adjective. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that this, that, these, and those are demonstrative adjectives. Now read the following sentences and underline these adjectives. This top doesn't go with these pants. Maybe you should try that blue top you bought a week ago. This these and that. Also remember that my, your, 
his, her, its, our, and their are possessive adjectives. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate possessive adjective. He, mom washed, we, dog, while we went on a vacation. His mom watched our dog while we went on a vacation. Also remember that each, every, either, and neither are distributive adjectives. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate distributive adjective. Single day was a good day. The road was straight with fields on side. Every day was a good day. The road was straight with fields on either side. And remember that which, what, and whose are interrogative adjectives. Now read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate interrogative adjective. Type of music do you like? What type of music do you like? Note that we use indefinite adjectives such as some, any, all, few, several, many, both, little, much, more, and most. Now read the following sentence and underline these adjectives. Many people enjoy running in the morning. Many. Here is a short story using pronominal adjectives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Whose book is this? This is my book. I've been reading it for several days. The title of this book looks really catchy. Yeah, I won't deny that. And I have this New Year's resolution to read more books, so I thought I'd give this book a try. What books do you usually read, though? Hmm, I like to read some fantasy or sci-fi novels, and the plot has to be interesting. Yeah, I agree with your opinion. And now... Time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the pronominal adjectives and decide whether they are demonstrative, possessive, distributive, interrogative, or indefinite adjectives. A. Thank you. These flowers are beautiful. B. Every child has the right to life. C. Which color should I pick? Red or blue? D. I'm afraid he will need several days to recover. E. It is said that neither side of the brain is dominant over the other. F. I don't find that TV shows amusing. G. I like her new haircut. Looks stylish. H. I could tell that the dog was happy to see me by its wriggling tail. I. Those seconds of pure happiness were difficult to forget. G. 
Jay, do you know whose jacket this is? And now, let's check your answers. Thank you. These flowers are beautiful. Demonstrative. Every child has the right to life. Distributive. Which color should I pick? Red or blue? Interrogative. I'm afraid he will need several days to recover. Indefinite. It is said that neither side of the brain is dominant or the other. Distributive. I don't find that TV show amusing. Demonstrative. I like her new haircut. It looks stylish. Possessive. I could tell that the dog was happy to see me by its wiggling tail. Possessive. Those seconds of pure happiness were difficult to forget. Demonstrative. Do you know whose jacket this is? Interrogative. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about degrees of adjectives, comparatives. Let's get started. Remember that an adjective is a word or set of words that modifies, in other words, describes a noun or pronoun. Remember that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify. Have a look at the example over here. This is a cute cat. This cat is cute. Note that the word cute is an adjective and it is used to modify or describe the noun cat. And in the first sentence, note that the adjective cute comes before the noun cat and in the second, after the noun cat. Now, most adjectives can show degree of quality or quantity by forming two degrees of comparison, the comparative and the superlative. Now, these degrees are formed from the positive degree, which is the usual form of adjectives. Have a look at the examples below. Let's start with the positive degree. For example, this is a tall building. The comparative form, this building is taller than that one. And the superlative, this is the tallest building. Now, to form a comparative sentence, we use the following formula. Noun or pronoun as the subject plus verb plus a comparative adjective plus then plus noun or pronoun as the object of the sentence. Have a look at the example below. My room is larger than Jake's. My room, being the subject, is verb larger comparative adjective than Jake's, the object. Remember that sometimes the second item of comparison can be omitted as in the example below. If you start working out, you'll get thinner. No second item in the sentence. Now when an adjective ends with one syllable, we simply add ER to form the comparative. For example, smart, smarter. And when an adjective ends with a vowel plus a consonant, we double the consonant and then add ER. For example, big, bigger. And when an adjective ends with a consonant plus a Y, we keep the consonant, then change Y to I and then add ER. For example, dry, drier. Now when an adjective ends with two syllables, we simply add ER or we add more. For example, happy, happier, tangled, more tangled. And when an adjective ends with three syllables, we simply add more. For example, beautiful, more beautiful. 
Now let's have a look at the following table where we can see how we can form the comparative and the superlative forms of irregular adjectives. Positive, good. The comparative form of good, better. Superlative, the best. Bad, comparative form, worse. Superlative, the worst. Far, comparative, farther, further. Superlative, the farthest, the furthest. Little, comparative, less. Superlative, the least. Much or many, comparative, more. Superlative, the most. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that when forming the comparative degree, follow the pattern, noun or pronoun, subject of the sentence, plus verb, plus comparative adjective, plus than, plus noun or pronoun as the object of the sentence. Now read the following sentence and provide the comparative form of the adjective in the bracket. Adam is tall than Jim. Adam is taller than Jim. Also remember that when an adjective ends with a vowel plus a consonant, we double the consonant and then add ER. And when an adjective ends with a consonant plus a Y, we keep the consonant, then change Y to I, then add ER. And when there are two syllables, we add ER or more. And when there are three syllables, we simply add more. Now provide the comparative form of the adjectives below. Heavy. Heavier. Fat. Fatter. Hot. Hotter. Easy. Easier. Wealthy wealthier or more wealthy important more important difficult more difficult here is a short story using comparative adjectives listen as i read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation after i'm done Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. How are you doing? I'm okay. And how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I must say that you look more tired in comparison to when I saw you last time. Yeah, my life is definitely more complicated now. I'm finishing my studies and craving for sleep. I try to choose healthier options when I eat. I try to be more active, but it doesn't help when you sleep four hours a day. I totally get you. Life was definitely easier when we were kids. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct word or phrase. A. It was better, more good this time. B. This dress is a lot longer that than the other one. C. Today, Tom feels more bad, worse than yesterday. D. Bill is more attentive, more attentiver, when he is talking to someone in person. E. Our drive took longer, longer than expected.
And now, read the following sentences and form the comparative degree. A. Non-smokers usually live long than smokers. B. The weather this winter is even bad than last winter. C. A holiday by the sea is good than a holiday in the mountains. D. This skirt is beautiful than that one. E. Our house is big than theirs. And now, let's check your answers. It was better this time. This dress is a lot longer than the other one. Today, Tom feels worse than yesterday. Bill is more attentive when he is talking to someone in person. Our drive took longer than we expected. Non-smokers usually live longer than smokers. The weather this winter is even worse than last winter. A holiday by the sea is better than a holiday in the mountains. This skirt is more beautiful than that one. Our house is bigger than theirs. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about degrees of adjectives, the superlative form. Let's get started. Remember that an adjective is a word or set of words that modifies, in other words, describes a noun or pronoun. Also note that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify. Have a look at the example over here. This is a cute cat. This cat is cute. Now the word cute is an adjective and it modifies the noun cat. And note that in the first sentence, the adjective comes before the noun cat and in the second, it comes after the noun cat. Now most adjectives can show degree of quality or quantity by forming two degrees of comparison, the comparative and the superlative degree. Now these degrees are formed from the positive degree, which is the usual form of adjectives. Now have a look at the examples below. Positive degree. For example, this is a tall building. Comparative form, this building is taller than that one. Superlative, this is the tallest building. Now to form a sentence using superlative adjectives, we use the following formula. Noun or pronoun as the subject of the sentence plus verb plus the plus superlative adjective plus noun or pronoun as the object of the sentence. Have a look at the example below. My room is the largest one in the house. My room, subject, is verb, the, largest superlative adjective, house, object of the sentence. Remember that sometimes the group that is being compared with can be omitted. Have a look at the example below. She is the prettiest girl in the office. Note that this part of the sentence, girl in the office, can be omitted. She is the prettiest. Now, when an adjective ends with one syllable, to form the superlative, we simply add EST. For example, smart, the smartest. 
and when an adjective ends with a vowel plus a consonant, we double the consonant and then add est. For example, big, the biggest. And when an adjective ends with a consonant plus a y, we keep the consonant, then change y to i, and then add est. For example, dry, the driest. Now, when an adjective ends with two syllables, we add est or the most. For example, happy, the happiest. Tangled, the most tangled. And when an adjective ends with three syllables, we simply add the most. For example, beautiful, the most beautiful. Now let's have a look at the comparative and superlative form of irregular adjectives. Positive, good. Comparative form would be better. Superlative, the best. Bad. Comparative, worse. Superlative, the worst. Far. Comparative, farther, further. Superlative, the farthest, the furthest. Little. Comparative, less. Superlative, the least. Many or much. Comparative, more. Superlative, the most. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that when forming the superlative degree, follow the pattern, noun or pronoun as the subject of the sentence, plus verb, plus the, plus superlative adjective, plus noun or pronoun as the object of the sentence. Now read the following sentence and provide the superlative form of the adjective in the bracket. Adam is tall, boy in class. Adam is the tallest boy in class. Also remember that when an adjective ends with a vowel plus a consonant, we double the consonant and then add est. And when an adjective ends with a consonant plus y, we keep the consonant, change y to i, and then add est. And when there are two syllables, we add est or the most. And when there are three syllables, we simply add the most. Now provide the superlative form of the adjectives below. Heavy. The heaviest, fat, the fattest, hot, the hottest, easy, the easiest, wealthy, the wealthiest or the most wealthy, important, the most important, difficult, the most difficult. Here is a short story using superlative adjectives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. How are you doing? I'm okay. And how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I must say that you look more tired in comparison to when I saw you last time. Yeah, my life is in the most complicated stage now. I'm finishing my studies and I'm craving for sleep. I try to choose the healthiest options when I eat. I try to be the most active, but it doesn't help when you sleep four hours a day. I totally get you. Life was definitely in the easiest stage when we were kids. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct word or phrase. A. You are truly the best, the most good.
B. This dress is the most unusual, the more unusual one you've ever had. C. That was the worst, the worstest day in their life. D. Bill is the most attentive, most attentive student I've ever seen. E. This was the funniest, the more funnier ride ever. And now, read the following sentences and form the superlative degree. A. This is good movie I've ever watched. B. This was little favorite option of ours. C. Have you heard of dangerous animal in Alaska? D. You are a smart person I know. E. Who is rich man on earth? And now, let's check your answers. You are truly the best. This dress is the most unusual one you've ever had. That was the worst day in their life. Bill is the most attentive student I've ever seen. This was the funniest ride ever. This is the best movie I've ever watched. This was the least favorite option of ours. Have you heard of the most dangerous animal in Alaska? You are the smartest person I know. Who is the richest man on earth? Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adverbs of frequency. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Now usually adverbs modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Note that there are two adverbs in the sentence. Now the adverb really modifies the other adverb, which is slowly. And the adverb slowly modifies the verb walked and tells us how we walked. Adverbs of frequency tell us how often something happens. They are also used to indicate routine or repeated activities. Have a look at the example over here. I always do my homework. Now the adverb of frequency in the sentence always tells us how often I do my homework. Remember that these adverbs are usually placed before the main verb, but after auxiliary verbs. Now have a look at the examples below. Our company frequently has brunches with potential clients. Note that has in the sentence is the main verb, and the adverb frequency frequently comes before it. But in this sentence, you should always wait for the green light to cross the road. Should is an auxiliary verb, and it comes before the adverb of frequency, always. And the main verb is wait. Now the only exception 
is when the main verb is to be, in which case the adverb goes after the main verb, as in the example below. We are usually optimistic. Now, when the frequency is 100%, the adverb of frequency we use would be always. For example, Sarah always helps her mom with dinner. And when the frequency is 90%, we use usually. For example, we usually go out on Fridays. And for 80% frequency, we use normally or generally. For example, Sean normally eats breakfast at 8 a.m. For 70%, often or frequently. For example, they often go to their parents at weekends. 50%, sometimes. For example, Peter sometimes forgets his kids' birthdays. And for 30% frequency, we use occasionally. For example, I occasionally eat vegetarian food. And for a 10% frequency, we use seldom. For example, we seldom go on vacation together. For 5%, hardly ever or rarely. For example, Meredith hardly ever drinks coffee. And for 0% frequency, we use never. For example, they never eat junk food. Now we can also use the following expressions when we want to be more specific about the frequency. For example, every day, once a month, twice a year, three times a day, every other week, daily, monthly, annually, etc. Have a look at the example over here. I usually eat pizza once a month. Now, if you need to use more than one adverb of time in a sentence, use them in the following order. First, how long? Second, how often? And third, when? Have a look at the example over here. Peter worked at the mall for four days every week last year. Four days? How long? Every week, how often? Last year, when? Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use adverbs of frequency to show how often something happens or to indicate routine or repeated activities. Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the bracket. I to invite Sometimes my friends over. I sometimes invite my friends over. Now the most common adverbs of frequency are always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, and never. Now create a sentence using the following words or phrases in the bracket. We to go on Wednesdays occasionally to the pub. We occasionally go to the pub on Wednesdays. She to go in the morning to the gym often. She often goes to the gym in the morning. Also remember to place adverbs that tell us how often something happens before the main verb but after auxiliary verbs. Now if there is a verb to be, then the adverb goes after the main verb. Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the bracket. Michael first to call Anne usually.
Michael usually calls Anne first. My mom with us never to be angry. My mom is never angry with us. Note that we can also use the following expressions when we want to be more specific about the frequency. For example, every day, once a month, twice a year, three times a year, etc. Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the bracket. I to eat once a month. Pizza, usually. I usually eat pizza once a month. Now, if you need to use more than one adverb of time in a sentence, make sure to use them in the following order. First, how long? Second, how often? Third, when? Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the bracket. Kate to work daily last month for 10 hours. Kate worked for 10 hours daily last month. Now here's a short story using adverbs of frequency. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Maggie, you look fantastic. Thank you, Liz. Have you been working out? Yeah, actually, I usually work out every other day. I think it helps me to always stay in shape. Plus, I've noticed that my mood has gotten better too. Do you have a special diet? Honestly, no. But I try to eat healthy every day. Of course, I can't have pizza once in a while, but it doesn't happen that often. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the adverbs from the box. Twice a year, annually, occasionally, every other day, seldom. A. Pam orders food online. B. Nina drinks alcohol. She doesn't like the taste of it. C. I have exams at uni. D. Birthdays are celebrated. E. Sam goes to the gym. He is too lazy to do it daily. And now, restore the word order in the following sentences. A. I late to get up, often on Saturdays. B. How often to travel you? C. When usually to go on vacation you? D. Samantha for work never to be late.
E. He three times a day not to take a shower. And now let's check your answers. Pam occasionally orders food online. Nina seldom drinks alcohol. She doesn't like the taste of it. I have an exam at uni twice a year. Birthdays are celebrated annually. Sam goes to the gym every other day. He is too lazy to do it daily. I often get up late on Saturdays. How often do you travel? When do you usually go on vacation? Samantha is never late for work. He doesn't take a shower three times a day. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adverbs of degree. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Now usually adverbs modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Now there are two adverbs in the sentence, really and slowly. Really modifies the other adverb slowly, and slowly modifies the verb walked and tells us how we walked. Now adverbs of degree tell us about the intensity of something. They are usually placed before the adjective, adverb, or verb that they modify. Have a look at the example over here. I was too scared to move forward. Too is an adverb of degree, and it tells us how scared we were, the intensity of our fear. Now the most common adverb of degree are extremely, quiet, just, almost, very, too, enough, etc. Now enough as an adverb meaning to the necessary degree goes after the adjective or adverb that it is modifying. Have a look at the example below. This bed is uncomfortable enough, meaning that it's not comfortable to the necessary degree. Also note that enough is often followed by to plus infinitive or for something or something. Have a look at the examples below. They're not old enough to get married. This suit is big enough for Mike. Now to, as an adverb meaning also, goes at the end of the phrase and modifies. And to, as an adverb meaning excessively, goes before the adjective or adverb and modifies. Now to is often followed by to plus infinitive or for something or someone. Have a look at the examples below. I'd like to go to the cinema too, meaning also. And in this sentence, is he too young to become a president? No, he isn't too young for that. Too in these sentences meaning excessively. And note that they come before the adjective they modify, young. Note that there is a big difference in meaning between too and very. Very expresses a fact, while too suggests that there is a problem. Have a look at the examples below. She speaks very quickly. That is a fact. And in this sentence, she speaks too quickly. I can't understand her. The adverb of degree to in this sentence suggests that her speaking too quickly is a problem. Now let's review and practice a bit. 
Remember that we use adverbs of degree to show the intensity of something. Now, the most common adverbs of degree are extremely, quiet, just, almost, very, too, enough, etc. Now, create a sentence using the words or phrases in the bracket. It quiet to be funny into her. Yesterday, twice to run. It was quite funny to run into her twice yesterday. Also, remember that we use enough as an adverb, meaning to the necessary degree. Make sure to place it after the adjective or adverb that it modifies. Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the following bracket. This tea hot enough not to be. This tea isn't hot enough. Note that enough is often followed by to plus infinitive or for something or someone. Now create a sentence using the phrases or words in the following bracket. You to be mature to make decisions enough for your own sake. You are mature enough to make decisions for your own sake. Also remember that to as an adverb meaning also goes at the end of the phrase and modifies. And to as an adverb meaning excessively goes before the adjective or adverb and modifies. Now to is often followed by to plus infinitive or for something or someone. Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the following bracket. I can do to play the guitar. I can play the guitar too. Sorry, but this too to be for me to buy expensive. Sorry, but this is too expensive for me to buy. Note that there is a big difference in meaning between too and very. Very expresses a fact, while too suggests that there is a problem. Now create a sentence using the words or phrases in the following bracket. It to be outside hot very it's very hot outside it hot to be too outside i to go out not to want it's too hot outside i don't want to go out here's a short story using adverbs of degree Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Katie is incredibly talented. She plays the piano, she sings, and she is learning the violin too. Really? That's just amazing. I was never persistent enough to do something like that. I've always thought that mastering these musical instruments is simply impossible. Maybe you haven't tried hard enough. She told me that she practices every single day. Can you believe it? That's too much for me. I'm too lazy for that. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the adverbs from the box. To, really, enough, just, incredibly. A. We did well on the test. We have the highest scores among the others. B. 
Jim has left before you arrived. C. I want to go there. Don't go without me. D. He didn't try hard. He gave up really. And now restore the word order in the following sentences. A. She sick to be to go to school too last week. B. Tom to leave rarely the house. C. You silly that to be. D. It's nice to be rather to see her yesterday. E. Look, that lady, stunning to be just. And now, let's check your answers. We did incredibly well on the test. We have the highest scores among the others. Jim has just left before you arrived. I want to go there too. Don't go without me. He didn't try hard enough. He gave up really quickly. She was too sick to go to school last week. Tom rarely leaves the house. Are you that silly? It was rather nice to see her yesterday. Look, that lady is just stunning. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about comparative and superlative adverbs. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Now usually adverbs modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Now there are two adverbs in the sentence, really and slowly. Really modifies the other adverb, slowly, and slowly modifies the verb walked and tells us how we walked. Now most adverbs can show degree of quality or quantity by forming two degrees of comparison, the comparative degree and the superlative degree. Now these degrees are formed from the positive degree, which is the usual form of adverbs. Have a look at the examples below. Let's start with the positive. She eats slowly. Slowly is the positive degree. The comparative form would be she eats more slowly than we do. Superlative? She eats the most slowly of us all. Now the comparative form is used for comparing two actions or state, while the superlative is used for comparing one action or state with all the others in the same category. As in the example below. He runs faster than Jack does. Comparative. But we need to check for sure who runs the fastest. Superlative. Now when adverbs end in ly, we add more or the most to form the comparative or the superlative form. For example, happily more happily, the most happily. 
And when adverbs end in E, we add R or ST. For example, late, later, the latest. Now the comparative form of the adverb well is better. The superlative, the best. Badly, the comparative form, worse. Superlative, the worst. Much, comparative, more. Superlative, the most. Little, comparative, less. Superlative, the least. Far, comparative, farther, further. Superlative, the farthest, the furthest. Note that it is impossible to have comparatives or superlatives of certain adverbs, especially those of time, for example, daily, yesterday, or then. Place, for example, there, up, down, and degree, for example, very, just, to. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember the comparative adverbs are used to compare differences between the two objects they modify. Now superlative adverbs are used for comparing one action or state with all the others in the same category. Now read the following sentence and underline the comparative or superlative adverb. This car is better than that one. I want to see which one is the best. Better than? The best. Now form the comparatives and the superlatives of the adverbs below. Quietly. More quietly? The most quietly. Low. Lower, the lowest. Near, near, the nearest. Seriously, more seriously, the most seriously. Now form the comparative and the superlative degrees of the adverb badly. She performs yesterday. Has anything happened? She performed of any actor today. She performs worse than yesterday. Has anything happened? She performed the best of any actor today. Note that it's impossible to have comparatives or superlatives of certain adverbs, especially those of time, for example, daily, yesterday, then. Please, for example, there, up, down, and degrees, for example, very, just, to. Now provide the correct form of the sentence below. He cooks more daily than his sister. He cooks daily while his sister rarely cooks. Here's a short story using comparative and superlative adverbs. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I haven't thought that Paul can play basketball that well. Actually, he was in a basketball club at school, so back then he played even better. Honestly, I think he played the best of any teammates. Yeah? I, I didn't know that. Yeah. But after the knee surgery, he started to play less and less. Sadly, that was inevitable. And now, time for you to practice on your own. 
form the comparatives and the superlatives of the following adverbs very well long loudly badly And now, read the following sentences, underline the mistakes, and then correct them. A. Susan came to work very lately yesterday. B. You should speak more quietlier at the library. C. We ran quite farly that day. D. Tim sings the bester. Everyone loves his singing. E. They drive more careful after the accident. And now, let's check your answers. Very, no comparative or superlative. Well, better, the best. Long, longer, the longest. Loudly, more loudly, the most loudly. Badly, worse, the worst. Susan came to work very late yesterday. You should speak more quietly at the library. We ran quite far that day. Tim sings the best. Everyone loves his singing. They drive more carefully after the accident. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about prepositions of manner. Let's get started. Now a preposition is usually a short word used to link nouns, pronouns, or phrases to other words within a sentence. Have a look at the example below. If I'm not mistaken, her birthday is in May. Now the word in in the sentence is a preposition and it is used to link the word or the noun May to her birthday. Now there are many types of prepositions. Among them are prepositions of manner. Now they are used to express the manner in which something is done. We usually use prepositions of manner when we answer the question beginning with how. Have a look at the example over here. How did she lose weight? She lost weight by exercising. The preposition of manner by expresses the manner in which she lost weight. Now there are several groups of prepositions of manner. A. In and with. In and with are used to describe the way in which something is carried out. It's in the examples below. She left the stage in tears. She was singing with tears in her eyes. B. By. By is used to denote either a person or a means of transportation, while with denotes an instrument. Have a look at the examples below. This house was built by my grandfather. Denoting a person. Helen goes to work by bus. Denoting a means of transportation. You need to cut the cake with a knife. Denoting an instrument. Now we can also use by plus verb ing. For example, you can't prove them wrong by doing nothing. C. 
at. At can be used to describe aggressive behavior. Now compare the following examples. He talked to his wife. He talked at his wife. Note that the first sentence has a neutral behavior, and in the second sentence, the preposition of manner at describes an aggressive behavior. Note that we can also use the phrase in a friendly way or manner to describe actions, as in the example below. Mrs. Anderson spoke to me in an extremely polite manner. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use in or with to describe the way in which something is carried out, and we use by to denote either a person or a means of transportation. Now read the sentences below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate preposition of manner. The student left the class. Tears after being shouted at, the teacher. The next day, the teacher, tears in her eyes, was apologizing to the student. The student left the class in tears after being shouted out by the teacher. The next day, the teacher, with tears in her eyes, was apologizing to the student. Now we use by to denote either a person or a means of transportation, and we use with to denote an instrument. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate preposition of manner. All the pies are baked. My mom. Recently, she has started baking sponge cakes. You need to whisk the dough for thirty minutes to get a nice texture. But it was too rough to do it manually. But a new mixture is truly a piece of cake. All the pies are baked by my mom. Recently, she has started baking sponge cake. You need to whisk the dough for thirty minutes to get a nice texture. But it was too rough to do it manually. But with A new mixture. It is truly a piece of cake. Also, note that we use at to describe aggressive behavior. Now rewrite the following sentence using the preposition of manner at. Mr. Taos always talks to his employees. Neutral. Mr. Taos. Always talks at his employees. Aggressive behavior. Here is a short story using prepositions of manner. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Alice looks amazing. How does she manage to lose weight? By exercising regularly. Was there some special diet? No, not really. For example, I go to work by bus, and Alice always goes on foot. It seems obvious, but you really can lose weight by walking everywhere. Maybe I need to change my attitude to walking. I work out with pleasure because I feel like I'm definitely doing something to lose weight. But when it comes to walking somewhere, I'd rather go by car. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with in, with, but, or at. A. Trying to cut a steak, a fork. Is not the best idea. B. I don't like traveling long distance car.
See, little Susie left the room, tears after being scolded. Her parents. D. L. was telling her something, but she suddenly snapped him. E. Kim suddenly stopped playing and threw the ball. Noah. F. Mr. Griffith always reacts anger whenever a student makes a mistake. G. You can't make friends. Being grumpy all the time. Edge, this story was written, Agatha Christie. I. I love Sandra's attitude to everything. She always does things a joyful manner. J, you'll actually save time going there. Foot. And now let's check your answers. Trying to cut a steak with a fork is not the best idea. I don't like traveling long distance by car. Little Susie left the room in tears after being scolded by her parents. Al was telling her something, but she suddenly snapped at him. Kim suddenly stopped playing and threw the ball at Noah. Mr. Griffith always reacts with anger whenever a student makes a mistake. You can't make friends by being grumpy all the time. This story was written by Agatha Christie. I love Sandra's attitude to everything. She always does things in a joyful manner. You'll actually save time by going there on foot. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about prepositions of cause, purpose, and reason. Let's get started. Remember that a preposition is usually a short word used to link nouns, pronouns, or phrases to other words within a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. If I'm not mistaken, her birthday is in May. Note that the word in is a preposition and it's used to link the noun may to her birthday. Now there are many types of prepositions and among them are prepositions of cause, purpose and reason. Remember that they are used to indicate why, what for or because of what something happens. We usually use these prepositions when we answer the question beginning with why. Have a look at the example over here. Why don't you eat breakfast? I don't eat breakfast to sleep more in the mornings. Now the preposition of cause to in the sentence tells us what for. Now there are several commonly used prepositions of cause, purpose and reason. Now let's have a look at those uses. A. Due to. Now due to is used to express the cause of the action. Have a look at the example over here. Due to her strict parents, Liz rarely went out. It was difficult for her to make friends. Meaning that her parents were the cause of her not making friends. B. 2. 
to is used to express the purpose of the action. Now it's usually followed by a verb. Have a look at the example over here. People go to clubs to dance and to meet new people. Now these two things are the purpose of people going to clubs. Dancing and meeting new people. C. For. For is used to express the reason of the action. Remember that it's usually followed by a noun or pronoun or adjourned. For example, he was taken to the police station for driving under influence. Now, DUI was the reason he was taken to the police station. Now remember that because of is also used to express the reason of something happening. Have a look at the example over here. I need to go home earlier because of my sick cat, meaning that my cat is sick and that's why I need to go home earlier. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use due to to express the cause of the action. And we use to to express the purpose of the action. Note that to is usually followed by a verb. Now read the following sentence and fill in the gaps using the appropriate preposition. Emma always has to go to the shop on the outskirts of the city, buy soy milk, her dairy allergy. Emma always has to go to the shop on the outskirts of the city to buy soy milk due to her dairy allergy. Now we use to to express the purpose of the action. Remember that to is usually followed by a verb and we use for to express the reason of the action. And for is usually followed by a noun or pronoun or adjourned. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps using the appropriate preposition. My parents always give extra pocket money to my little brother, doing well at school. Thankfully, he is saving up the money by a computer instead of spending it on food. My parents always give extra pocket money to my little brother for doing well at school. Thankfully, he is saving up the money to buy a computer instead of spending it on food. Here is a short story using prepositions of cause, purpose, and reason. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Why can't you go out with us tonight? That's all because of my parents. They are quite strict and don't want me going out late at night. But you aren't going to be alone. I know, I know. They think that all people go to clubs only to get drunk but I've never done anything inappropriate. There is no reason for them being so negative about it. You're still living with your parents, so you can't really do anything about it. We'll go out some other time then, okay? Now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct preposition. A. We would like for, to, thank you, for, to your hospitality. B. The kid left the room due to to cry in his room. C. Dan's mom can't drink milk because of to her allergy.
D. It's all because of to you. E. We're so happy for to have you here. F. I always bring sweets for to my little cousins when I'm visiting them. G. Their shop was closed down due to for the financial struggles. H. O. The things we do for due to love. I. Due to for the shortage of staff, we are working overtime. J. Timothy always makes coffee because of for his wife in the morning. And now, let's check your answers. We would like to thank you for your hospitality. The kid left the room to cry in his room. Dan's mom can't drink milk because of her allergy. It's all because of you. We're so happy to have you here. I always bring sweets for my little cousins when I'm visiting them. Their shop was closed down due to the financial struggles. Oh, the things we do for love. Due to the shortage of staff, we are working overtime now. Timothy always makes coffee for his wife in the morning. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about prepositional phrases. Let's get started. Now, a prepositional phrase is a group of words consisting of a preposition and a noun, pronoun, gerund, or clause. Have a look at the example over here. She tried to calm down the baby by singing lullabies. Now, by singing lullabies is a prepositional phrase, and note that it consists of a preposition, by, gerund, singing, and a noun, lullabies. A prepositional phrase always consists of two basic parts at minimum, the preposition and its object. Have a look at the example over here. I think I'll be at home. At is a preposition, and home is a noun, object of the sentence. Now, a prepositional phrase is a group of words that consists of A, a preposition, and a noun, as in the example over here, Eric was fired from McDonald's. Preposition, noun. B, a preposition and a pronoun. For example, he always leaves little presents for me. For is the preposition and me pronoun. C. A preposition and a gerund. For example, Carol managed to lose some weight thanks to exercising. Two, exercising gerund. D. A preposition and a clause. For example, I need to talk to you about stuff we need for our trip. Clause. Now, a prepositional phrase can function either as an adjective or an adverb in the sentence. 
Now, as an adjective, the prepositional phrase answers the question, which one? Have a look at the examples below. The boy with red hair was taking photos outside. Which one? The one with the red hair. And as an adverb, the prepositional phrase answers the questions how, when, where. Have a look at the example over here. Gabby went for a run at 5 o'clock. When did she go for a run? At 5 o'clock. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that a prepositional phrase is a group of words consisting of a preposition and a noun, pronoun, gerund, or clause. Now read the sentences below and underline the prepositional phrases. You can lose some weight by not eating anything, but it's a bad idea. By not eating, which is preposition plus gerund. I'll be staying at my grandma's place tonight. At my grandma's place, preposition plus noun. Also remember that as an adverb, the prepositional phrase answers the question how, when, where. Now read the following sentences and match them. Also, underline the prepositional phrases. A. How long have you been learning Italian? B. When did you wake up? C. Where did you buy such a pretty pair of boots? 1. Oh, thank you. I got them at our local mall. 2. I've been trying to master it for 10 years. 3. At 8 o'clock, though it's my day off today. How long have you been learning Italian? I've been trying to master it for 10 years. When did you wake up? At 8 o'clock, though it's my day off. Where did you buy such a pretty pair of boots? Oh, thank you. I got them at our local mall. Here is a short story using prepositional phrases. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Do you have any plans for tonight? Yeah. I'm going on a day with David. I think we're going to a bar or something. With whom? With David, my colleague. He's a really nice guy. He was transferred from another department about a month ago. And we have so much in common. Oh, that's amazing. Let's hang out some other time then. Sure. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct preposition. A. In, on, a beautiful Thursday morning, I found out that I got expelled from, to, university. B. My grandma Judy grew up on, in, a farm, on, in, Idaho. C. Come over onto here. Look at that cute puppy. D. Could you pass me that book? Which one? The one from with a yellow cover. E. My grandparents live in, off a tiny house in, by the lake.
F. Stop beating a ball around a bush. I can't understand anything. G. I always see people jogging on through the park. Edge. There was a huge pile with of books under into the desk. I. Jenny can't have guests over at her place for because of the landlord. J. Ben got sick due by eating junk food all the time. And now, let's check your answers. On a beautiful Thursday morning, I found out that I got expelled from university. My grandma Judy grew up on a farm in Idaho. Come over here. Look at that cute puppy. Could you pass me that book? Which one? The one with the yellow cover. My grandparents live in a tiny house by the lake. Stop beating around a bush. I can't understand anything. I always see people jogging through the park. There was a huge pile of books under the desk. Jenny can't have guests over at her place because of the landlord. Ben got sick by eating junk food all the time. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about subordinating conjunctions. Let's get started. Conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, clauses, or sentences together. Have a look at the example over here. Susan is an amazing wife and a wonderful mom. Now the word end in the sentence is a conjunction and it's used to link two sentences together. Susan is an amazing wife, a wonderful mom. Now there are many types of conjunctions and among them are subordinating conjunctions. Now subordinating conjunctions link two clauses, a main independent one and a subordinate dependent one. Have a look at the example over here. Although Emma wanted to go together with them, she declined the invitation. Note that she declined the invitation is the independent clause, the main one, and Emma wanted to go together with them is the dependent clause, subordinate clause. These two sentences are linked together with the subordinating conjunction although. Now the most commonly used subordinating conjunctions are although, as, because, if, since, though, unless, while, whereas, etc. Note, subordinating conjunctions perform two functions in a sentence. They state the importance of the independent clause and provide a transition between two ideas within a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. Once she stopped caring about strangers' opinion, Liz became happier. Note that Liz became happier is the main clause, and she stopped caring about strangers' opinions is a subordinating clause. Now, if the subordinate clause follows the main one, we do not usually use a comma, as in the example over here. My mom cries, main clause, whenever she watches a romantic comedy, subordinate clause. Note 
that a comma is not used in this sentence because the subordinate clause follows the main one. My mom cries. Now, if the subordinate clause precedes the main one, use a comma to separate the clauses. Have a look at the example over here. After he had completed studies, George decided to travel for a year. Main clause, subordinate clause. Now, in this sentence, a comma is used because the subordinate clause precedes the main clause. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember, the subordinating conjunctions link two clauses, a main independent one and a subordinate or dependent one. Now, read the following sentences and underline the correct ones. Whenever, since, you asked me, yes, I did sign up for the class. Since, if, unless, you are happy with your own self, you'll be happy whenever, wherever you go. If, wherever. Also, remember that if the subordinate clause follows the main one, we do not usually use a comma. And if the subordinate clause precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma to separate the clause. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate punctuation. After he called her, Susan had a smile on her face for the rest of the day. Comma Although I adore Mike, he isn't the most polite man on earth. Coma. Billy gets extremely impatient whenever his mom's cooking breakfast. No coma. Here is a short story using subordinating conjunctions. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Whenever my mom doesn't let my little brother eat candies before dinner, he throws a tantrum. That sounds awful. Yeah, we don't know what to do about it. Even though we try to be calm and explain that you can have some candy after eating properly, he becomes all whiny. Maybe he doesn't like something particular. I remember that I hated broccoli when I was a kid, and yet I was always forced to eat it. Hmm, you have a good point. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct conjunctions. A. My brother doesn't like cooking if because he hates cleaning up afterwards. B. I know that Carol won't go outside with us if while she has a morning shift day. C. Until now that we are grown-ups, we should be in charge of our decisions. D. As long as, even though you continue avoiding your fears, you can't live a better life. E. Bob doesn't go for a run and unless it's sunny outside. F. Even though because I was tired, I went to the party. G. 
Linda always goes to thrift shops rather than because she can't afford brand new clothes. Edge, I wanted to talk to Mr. Johns, which whose support was always important to me. I, once while Kate graduates from high school, she wants to travel around the world. J, that as soon as the dog hears the doorbell, it runs towards the door. And now, let's check your answers. My brother doesn't like cooking because he hates cleaning up afterwards. I know that Carol won't go out with us if she has a morning ship day. Now that we are grown-ups, we should be in charge of our decisions. As long as you continue avoiding your fears, you can't live a better life. Bob doesn't go for a run unless it's sunny outside. Even though I was tired, I went to the party. Linda always goes to thrift shops because she can't afford brand new clothes. I wanted to talk to Mr. Johns, whose support was always important to me. Once Kate graduates from high school, she wants to travel around the world. As soon as the dog hears the doorbell, it runs towards the door. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about correlative conjunctions. Let's get started. Remember that conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, clauses, or sentences together. Have a look at the example over here. Susan is an amazing wife and a wonderful mom. Note that the word end is a conjunction and it's used to link two sentences together. Susan is an amazing wife, a wonderful mom. Now there are many types of conjunctions and among them are correlative conjunctions. Now correlative conjunctions are used to connect two equal grammatical items in a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. Either you apologize or I'll call mommy. Note that you apologize and I'll call mommy are two equal grammatical items. Now these conjunctions come in pairs. For example, either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also, rather, than, etc. Now when using correlative conjunctions, pay attention to the subject predicate agreement so that you have parallel structures. Have a look at the examples below. College life is not only about partying, but also study like crazy. Now this sentence would be incorrect. The correct form would be, college life is not only about partying, but also about studying like crazy. Note that a negative correlative like neither nor can go at the beginning of a sentence. Now in this case, the word order is inverted and the auxiliary verb comes before the subject. Now compare the sentences below. Neither did Sam clean the apartment, nor did he buy groceries. Sam neither cleaned the apartment, nor bought groceries. Note that in the first sentence, the auxiliary verb did comes before the subject, Sam. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that correlative conjunctions connect two equal grammatical items in a sentence. 
Now these conjunctions come in pairs. For example, either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also, rather, than, etc. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the correct ones. Juice, water, I don't drink anything else. Either juice or water. You should buy sweets for yourself, for your small siblings, sharing is caring. You should buy sweets not only for yourself but also for your small siblings. Sharing is caring. He stay at the home the whole winter. Go out in the freezing weather. He'd rather stay at home the whole winter than go out in the freezing weather. Note that a negative correlative like neither nor can go at the beginning of a sentence. Now in this case, remember that the word order is inverted and the auxiliary verb comes before the subject. Now read the following sentences and provide the correct form. Maggie neither to call me nor to send a text yesterday. Maggie neither called me nor sent a text yesterday. Neither me nor me a text yesterday. Neither did Maggie call me nor did she send me a text yesterday. Here is a short story using correlative conjunctions. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. We can't go either to the park or to the mall. I don't feel like going anywhere. I'd rather stay at home than go anywhere. Is something wrong? No, everything's okay. I just feel a bit sick. I don't know why though. Neither did I eat anything weird nor did I drink alcohol. We should definitely rest then. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and correct the mistakes. A. They are either crazy nor madly in love. B. Neither did Becky understand her friend, nor she tried to understand her. C. Traveling alone isn't as fun as to travel with friends. D. These jeans are both expensive or outdated. E. She'd rather buy frozen food than cooking every day. F. This joke is neither funny or appropriate. G. Not only will they come here, but will they also stay with me for a whole week? H. He would rather die than would tell them the truth. I. She finds James 
not repulsive only, but also annoying. J. Only not does he sing, but he also dances at the same time. And now, let's check your answers. They are either crazy or madly in love. Neither did Becky understand her friend, nor did she try to understand her. Traveling alone isn't as fun as traveling with friends. These jeans are both expensive and outdated. She'd rather buy frozen food than cook every day. This joke is neither funny nor appropriate. Not only will they come here, but they will also stay with me for a whole week. He would rather die than tell them the truth. She finds James not only repulsive, but also annoying. Not only does he sing, but he also dances at the same time. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about compound conjunctions. Let's get started. Remember that conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, clauses, or sentences together. Have a look at the example over here. Susan is an amazing wife and a wonderful mom. Note that the word end is a conjunction and it's used to link the sentences Susan is an amazing wife, a wonderful woman. Now there are many types of conjunctions and among them are compound conjunctions. Now compound conjunctions are phrases which are used as conjunctions. A compound conjunction has two or three words that go together. For example, so that, as long as, even though, etc. Have a look at the example over here. You can buy whatever you want as long as you use your own money. Note that the compound conjunction as long as in this sentence is used to link these two sentences. Even though compound conjunctions have two or three words that go together, they are different from correlative conjunctions, which are conjunctions used only in pairs. Now compare the sentences below. Beth likes painting as well as drawing. Beth thinks that you can be good either at painting or at drawing. Now there are several commonly used compound conjunctions. Let's have a look at those compound conjunctions. You can buy clothes as well as shoes there, meaning you can buy clothes and shoes there. As soon as it started raining, they opened a window in the apartment, meaning that it started raining and they immediately opened the windows. The kid sang so loudly as if or as though there was no one in the room, meaning that the kid sang so loudly like there was no one in the room. Even if or even though I don't like plain honey, I'll eat sweets with honey in them, meaning that I don't like plain honey, but nevertheless I'll eat sweets with honey in them. John will pass the test, provided that he studies every day, meaning that if John studies every day, he'll pass the test. I'll turn off my phone so that no one disturbs me. Please turn off your phone in order that we are not disturbed by anyone. Note that in order that is more formal than so that. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that a compound conjunction has two or three words that go together. For example, so that, even if, etc. Now read the sentences below and underline compound conjunctions. 
As long as you are sound and happy, we will be happy too. As long as. Even though it was extremely difficult, we managed to finish everything on time. Yet the boss wasn't happy with the final result, and we had to redo the whole project as well as find a new concept idea. Even though, as well as. Also remember that compound conjunctions are phrases which are used as conjunctions. Now read the sentence below and use the compound conjunction in brackets to link the sentences. As if she talked to me, she was mad at me. She talked to me as if she was mad at me. Even if I have to stay up very late, I will help you out. I will help you out even if I have to stay up very late. Here is a short story using compound conjunctions. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself. So that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Could you hurry up so that we don't miss the movie? Give me a minute. It's not as if I'm being late on purpose. Well, you could have started getting dressed earlier then. If we don't leave now, we'll miss the movie as well as our cab. It's waiting for us outside. Okay, I'm coming. See, didn't take that long. And now. It's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the words and phrases in the box. If, soon, that, even, in, otherwise, provided, even though, as, as soon. A. Jack is always so dramatic as he were a soap opera actor. I don't understand why he is like that. B. As they broke up, they both started dating other people. I can't wrap my head around it. C. Sam works full time. Well, as takes care of everything at home, he's a wonderful husband. D. That you signed a contract. We can't discuss the project details. E. You can't buy a new car provided that you get a part-time job. You can't afford it. F. Liz always calls her parents during the day. There is a huge time difference. She is in the states now, and there in Australia. G. Kate always eats breakfast. If she is late to work. Edge. I'd rather come to work earlier, so I don't have to experience the rush hour ever again. I. She left the room in tears as, as he started shouting at her. J. The papers should be ready today. Order that we can estimate the costs. And now 
Let's check your answers. Jack is always so dramatic, as if he were a soap opera actor. I don't understand why he is like that. As soon as they broke up, they both started dating other people. I can't wrap my head around it. Sam works full time as well as takes care of everything at home. He is a wonderful husband. Provided that you sign the contract, we can discuss the project details. You can't buy a new car, provided that you get a part-time job. Otherwise, you can't afford it. Liz always calls her parents during the day, even though there is a huge time difference. She is in the states now, and they're in Australia. Kate always eats breakfast, even if she is late to work. I'd rather come to work earlier so that I don't have to experience the rush hour ever again. She left the room in tears as soon as he started shouting at her. The papers should be ready today in order that we can estimate the costs. Thank you for watching this tutorial.